Okay. Nice, this is great. We got some... I've got some... I think this is... Some kind of Sinatra copycat on my side. <laughs> nice. Um, by the way, you're going to love when you see it, this image I have on the stream of uh -huh. your handle. I don't know if you see that. The one at the bottom? Yeah, this is great. Look, it's like a little bit see-through. Yeah. It's nice. kind of fucking awesome. All right. We should send a tweet. Can I not chat? Chat. All right, it's, it's time to send this tweet. Also, by the way, if if like I, I think we got a few people coming. If no one shows up, we'll just chill and record it, and it'll end up on it'll end up on YouTube. Yeah. Perfect. No one will know the difference. Oh yeah, I better test the audio on this side just to make sure it's. This is great. The vibes are great. This is awesome. All right, I'm just gonna like tag everybody. Oh, we got some people. Oh, we got some people showing up. Nice. Where do you see when someone joins in? I see a number of viewers. Okay. In the thing. Um, what's up, viewers? Come on in. We're just getting getting set up. We haven't really gotten started yet. We're just welcoming people in the door. Texas Gunner. Texas Gunner. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. What's up, man? I'm just composing a tweet. What is good? What is good? Uh, we're, here we go. Alright, I'm just going to tag like everybody who liked this thing. Perfect. You, you should tell jokes. Oh man, you put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Mine just went blank. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who any of these people are. Who half these people are? That's okay. I guess maybe these are your followers. It never occurred to me that you might have different followers than I do. Probably. I mean, there's definitely a, a lot of overlap, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what those outer edges are. I wonder how it's like culturally different. Oh wow, TX Gun uh, throwing a lot of jokes. Link. Uh -huh. We should. We can read some lava jokes. <laughs> Let's see, a lava rock quit his job at the volcano today. Said they took him for granite. It's terrible. <laughs> wait, wait. What is, can you explain that lava joke? <laughs> it might. It might be difficult uh, hearing it versus reading it. Right. Said they took him for for granite, the type of rock. No, no, I understood uh, that part. <laughs> I oh, say, why? You say explain why I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm explain granite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Explain granite. What does granite have to do with it? What's up? Because they took him for for granite. I understand Nobody that. Nobody wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand that. I, I think I'm I'm the one missing something here. No, no, no. You you are right now. Yeah, here we go. Texas gonna. Granite is like maybe cooled lava. I don't fucking know. Oh. Well, yeah, if we're going to get if we're if we're going to get super technical, I think this joke is not uh, geologically accurate because uh -huh. granite is not an, an igneous rock. So uh, I'm blaming I'm blaming the no laughs on the joke creator because the truth, you know, you need truth in comedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm almost done writing down all these people that I need to tag. This is just going to be a really annoying thread for people to get tagged in. Um, but that's okay. 
it's for the greater good as I always say yeah all right, we've hit the limit on tweet number one. Let me just throw a volcano in there. Let's go for another joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my kids were playing the floor is lava in the living room this morning. I still don't know how they got the lava in the house. Well, wow, these, these are- What's the joke? What is the joke? <laughs> <laughs> these, these What's really... the joke? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna scroll for something better. All right. I've almost, I've almost put all the tweets. Keep going. Give us another one. All right. Maybe, maybe a longer one will be better. Like a, like a paragraph. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just gonna go into this blind. So yeah. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. An American and a Mexican are sitting at the <laughs> beach when a, ge when a genie <laughs> offers both of them one wish. Uh -huh. The American says, I'd like a five mile high wall around the US so that no foreigners or illegal Chinese goods can enter without our government's permission. And voila, the wall is built. The genie then asks the Mexican what he wants. Fill it with lava. Wait, oh, oh it's, this is like an American, this is like, that was a terrible joke. It is, yeah, Texas gun. I'm, I'm not feeling this lava site, this lava joke site. We're just telling lava jokes. Okay, I've, I've sent the final tweet, and I can now direct my attention entirely to what we were actually doing here. Hey, we got some people. We, we got some people. Wait, one, one, one last one. This is slightly better. Yeah. But still bad. Girl, are you a lava lamp? Because I could watch you go up and down for hours. <laughs> it's more of a lava lamp joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's that's enough lava jokes for, that's it. for now. That's it. All right, sorry, I'm just met, still screwing with the music. It's a little bit. It's a little bit weird, but we're just gonna go with a happy Saint Nick. All right, we got enough of a crew, so I say we just jump into it. Um, Let's go. I am a little bit picky. Um, all right, everybody, welcome to Philosophers on Twitch playing Flight Simulator. Um, we are not as affiliated with any real airline or Microsoft Flight Simulator or literally anything else. This is just this is just some bullshit that we're doing, but we're glad that you're here. Jump in the chat, say shit, you know, just like fucking talk to each other. I, I assume like most of the people here are, are Twitter people that kind of know each other in the Twitter sense that we all kind of know each other kind of don't know each other um i'm just man is my internet glitching out i'm, I'm seeing it perfectly okay it looks good on the stream i guess my my other computer is just being screwy all right came here because tyler one recommended this channel on his stream <laughs> sweet <laughs> that's actually a, a a meat space buddy uh-huh uh-huh that would be sick dude <laughs> Miles, welcome. Welcome, welcome. You, what, uh, Miles, why do you have a crown by your name? What does that mean? I, I have this, I have this Twitch channel, but I don't really know anything about how Twitch really works. Twitch Prime. Oh. I saw that and I was like, Fancy. I was like, shit, did I make a mod and I didn't even know it? Um, okay, but well, this this is just Twitch Prime. All right, you know what? My laptop is is goofing off so i have a backup plan almost ready to rock we're gonna we're gonna get this plane started we gotta pick a route um where am i clicking uh there we go i'm gonna go to twitch i'm gonna just use chat on my phone that should work all right perfect all right, what do you say? Should we make should we make drinks now, or should we get in the air before before pouring one? Oh, I, I'm already at the at the airport lounge having my first drink. You're you're already having one. I might show yeah. you. All right, man. I'm I'm gonna get a little bit. Got my uh, leg of in here. Tell me about this. Uh, what what is it? Whiskey single malt. This What's is scotch. This is the leg I got this nice little scotch glass. 
It's actually kind of humongous. Uh, there's a name for this glass, um, but I don't remember what it is. Um, Lagavulin Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, aged eight years. It's just a standard one. Where, where is it from? We are going to be drinking and flying on this adventure, Nuel Satan Gang. Um, it's from, uh, well, Isla, I believe, is a region in Scotland. Okay. Um, and it's, I don't know if you've ever had, like, super smoky scotch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, wait. Cheers to our to our voyage. Salud. Salud. I'm drinking some rum sacapa centenario. Cheers. It's uh, a Guatemalan rum or pride here. Uh-huh. Uh, but the, the process, how they make it, is more similar to how you'd make uh, a scotch or a single malt. Okay. Uh, aged in oak barrels for, this one's 23 years. Uh-huh. Um, so definitely a rum that you enjoy, you know, neat around the rocks. Uh, how are you having it right now? On the rocks. On the rocks. Yeah. Nice. I'm just going to try to turn you up a little bit on my side. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Oh, perfect. I can turn it up a bit here, too. I, I found the control. I think we're good. All right, cool. Okay. Let's let's just do this. Let's just get in. Let's get in here. Um, so you can see the screen. We, we got to just pick a route, and we have to choose okay. where we're going in the world and we and also what time we're going so i, I okay. just got this game flights just to explain to people watching i just got flight simulator and i don't know too much about it and i'm actually kind of bad at the game but the idea is we have an actual world map with uh in fact live like i'm pretty sure like weather patterns are live welcome oh shit to this podcast we got a follower wow. welcome welcome follower unfortunately my chat's broken so i can't see exactly who it was welcome um what was I going to say? We got to pick the time of day because I think that the actual air traffic and stuff is like live, right? Uh, From like what actually happened today and stuff like that. So, do you have a an airport in mind that we should start at? Yeah, if we're gonna do the the volcano tour. I say we take off from Guatemala City. All right. I wonder if I can type it in. M G G T. No, G-U-A. Oh, G-U-A. Yeah. G-U-A. I don't know if you're seeing these. Uh... Yeah, that one. Oh, oh. M-G- yeah, yeah, it was M-G-G-T. I don't know oh, if you have it at that. Okay, sweet. Okay, Welcome cool. to this podcast. Got another follow, except for it's kill. Are you hearing... Oh, I guess you can't hear my awesome podcast joining sound. Um, I'll play it for you later. It's, it's You're going to love it. All right, cool. Wait, we got our de departure. Welcome. To this podcast, the spam and follows. It, isn't it good? All right, the the, the viewers can hear it. That's nice. a free sound. That's a free sound that I got, and it's just the best shit. All right, we need a, uh, an arrival airport. Oof. Um, we also, by the way, we won't necessarily make it to our destination, so we we're gonna fly around, uh -huh. but we might not. You know, we might have to touch down early, as it were. So, just basically a direction, okay. if that makes sense. And we can pick one. Yeah. Try uh, landing in Tapachula, Mexico. That's T A P A. That should bring it up. Tapachula. T A P A C H. Yeah. I guess you speak Spanish, huh? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I used to be able to hablar un poco de español, but it's a little bit rusty. All right, Tapachula International, or I'll go to the, yeah. the, the first one. The first one, yeah. Okay, this is only a 30-minute trip, so we might, we could go there, touch well, down, and come back. Well, we can we can do the extremely meandering The very meandering route. route. There. All right, cool. Yeah. I say we make it daytime. Yeah, for sure. All right, so I just pushed it back like six hours or something. What's up, Vogel Free? Welcome to the chat. How's it going? We're just picking our route. We're uh, we're going from uh, it looks like Guatemala to Mexico. All right, cool. We also have to pick Ooh, a plane. Logo phrase says dusk or dawn. That could be interesting. These are yeah. How should we do this? What's the uh, 
looks like dusk is at 535 or so. So if we started at... It I'd say maybe dawn, so we, night doesn't fall on us. Okay, we could do dawn. Yeah. We, could, we could start kind of in the dark. That could be cool. We could see that a sunrise. Good. Otherwise, it's not a real party. Otherwise, it isn't a real party. <laughs> yeah, man. Agreed. Agreed. Get it. All right, sorry. I'm, I'm just going to screw with this for one more minute longer. My freaking internet. On my other computer. Cool. All right, dude. Let's do it. I'm just going to... Oh, wait. We got to pick a plane. I forgot. Um, do you have a favorite plane in this game? I don't know enough about this game to have a favorite plane. I kind of like this one that is selected. The Daher TBM 930. Okay. Um, I tried fl flying the Boeing 747. It's just a monster. It's like a fucking whale. Um, yeah. I, I think we should have something where we can do... Uh... You know, some tight turns, getting close. Right. Um, and we don't need to be too fast. I haven't tried any of these ones, if you're seeing. We got one. Does this... That doesn't look like it lands on water. Flips and shit. Yeah, we, we've got a... Try again. To restart. We gotta do at least one flip. Well, we can try to do a flip. I, I turned off crashes, so we might just touch the ground when we fail. Welcome um, to this podcast. Welcome to this podcast. I need I need a tagline. I need a thing I say when people follow. Um Harvey, I follow this dude, Lobos Jr. Uh huh. And he always says, Welcome to the Wolf Pack, and it's fucking sick. But I don't have <laughs> on, it. On his Twitch channel, you mean. The what? Um, when someone joins his Twitch channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When people follow him. Cool. Yeah, we gotta get your tagline for sure. Any proposals are welcome in the chat all right dude sketch is preventing me from restarting my computer bullshit i don't get it welcome to this podcast welcome to the airplane am i always gonna play flight simulator i don't know we're gonna see how this goes I guess we better get off the ground so it actually goes all right <laughs> yeah. let's just, let's just pick one of these how about this blue one Let's do the blue one. It says max that altitude. That one looks agile. It says max altitude twenty thousand feet. I don't know if that's tall or not, but if that's high or not. Twenty thousand feet. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty good. All right, let's just do this. Yeah. All right, perfect. Um, I think we'll be cruising like between ten and fifteen to get good views. Prepare to get fucking cursed. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Yeah, let's let's get high. That's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty fucking good. Generaja. Prepare for liftoff. Not bad. Not bad. We could do a space game. BRB got to make my wife some dumplings. That's a great. Um, that's a great tagline. Time to make my wife some dumplings. <laughs> Interpret as you will. Dude, I'm telling you, your your face looks great on this. Your your avatar face looks great on this. Semi I, I'm, I'm on the Christmas avatar right now, and I sort of miss the the original. Yeah, well, we'll very attached to it. All right, check this out. We we got it going, and it's it's morning. I'm just gonna hit ready to fly, so time will start going. And is this super dark? That's what we're gonna have to figure out. Because if wow. it was... welcome to this, uh, this is beautiful. Prepare for liftoff. <laughs> it's pretty visible. It seems pretty yeah. visible. Oh yeah, wait, hold on. I gotta connect my controller here. I forgot that I was playing this. That's us, by the way. They they have. Wow. <laughs> That's us. Welcome. Wait, so we might we might hit the first volcano still at nighttime. Do you is know that what time it is in here in this game? Um, hold on, I can check as soon as I. Oh, there we go. As soon as I let's get inside, and we can actually look. In our little uh, vehicle here, it'll tell us, and it keeps telling me to disable the parking brake. Does any of this look like wow. a? Does any of this look like a clock to you? Everything and nothing. It all looks like a clock. Hold on, maybe well, we. Well, we can uh, we can we can sort of just cruise. Yeah. Wait for the sun to come up, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's do just, that. Just flow. 
let me uh, turn on the um, visual assistance. We're going to get off the ground. See, this is just like a real plane ride where you have to sit around and fucking wait the whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on, camera. Does the plane crash if you don't take off properly? <laughs> Are we fucked? <laughs> Miles is already worried. So I turned off crashes because I, I had planes falling apart like in the air. Um, uh huh. But uh, it's that it's it's that realistic. Yeah, 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 no, it is. It is that realistic. I have the pilot voice. The pilot the pilot voice for real takes training. Hold on. Display mode. Can you... you gotta do a, a takeoff message as the captain. Right. Cockpit camera selection. Shit. Instrument view. Yeah, that's what we want. Or no, 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 not that. Heads up display for instruments. Okay, okay, cool. Nice. Plan safe. We should be. Just gotta get the. Uh... There we go. We got some stuff. We got some stuff. And look over there. The sun is kind of. The sun is kind of rising. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this will be perfect. So we're um, we're facing south here on the runway. Yeah. And I live probably a kilometer away in a straight line to our left side. To the to the east. To the east, yes. All right, let's 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 get off the ground. All right, what, what do we gotta say? What do you say? Everyone, buckle the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Trade tables up. Trade tables up. Uh, okay. To increase engine power, gradually press and hold A. <laughs> Take off. If we oh. crash, we crash. Fuck it. Oh, General no, Raj is getting antsy. Yeah, <laughs> YOLO. Hold on. Yeah, push that throttle, crazy. All right, I'm pushing it. A. Oh, no, I turned a little bit. We're going to do it from inside. I like this better. Where we do it from inside, we can kind of just look around. This is me and you. This is me and you. We're going. Nice. If we crash, we crash. It's kind of right, beautiful. You know, it looks a little bit like the Bay Area to me, to be honest. How so? Those lights on the hillside kind of thing. There's a whole lot of that. Mm. There's a whole lot of that. All right, we're yeah. speeding up. We're speeding up. Here we to go. Press to take off, pull back. Yeah, so the, those those tall buildings you see to the left, that's uh -huh. where I live. You live in the airport. <laughs> Near the airport. Near the airport. All right, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Let me, uh, I forgot how to control this fucking thing. Oh, it's our, <laughs> my camera's a little... Let's, let's, let's try to make it at least five minutes in the air, okay? Yeah, let's do it. We're going to get a beautiful sunrise, I promise you. To retract flaps, press F5. There we go. How do I retract the... Uh... There we go. Retracting landing gear. Nice knowing you guys. Bumpy ass ride. Hey, where we're going... I, you won't I thought you were a, a proper pilot, Grizzly, and I, I'm seeing this is going to be more exciting than I thought. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm hyped. I, I'm hyped. We're going to get up in the air. We're going to see some volcanoes, I'm telling you. Um, I just got to remember how to fucking play. I haven't played this game. Okay, wait, where's our altitude? Okay, we got airspeed on the left. People can see that. Mm -hmm. Um, The altitude... altitude. Wait, why is it? Why won't I go up? Maybe. Oh, I fucked up the trim. Do, I fucked up. Do the we trim. have any actual pilot mutuals? Yeah, that would be super helpful. Yeah, pilot mutuals. That would be super useful for playing this goddamn game. I'm literally losing As... altitude right now. Come on, we got to get up. So, you're slow climb, slow climb. No, we're slowly climbing. Sort of. To increase. Speed I, wish, I wish I could offer advice here, but I'm just gonna serve myself another drink. All right, <laughs> we're real low. We're real low, dude. Oh no, no, no! It's because I haven't been pressing the throttle. I've, I've been turning off the engine by accident. Oh my god! <laughs> throttle that shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, so you can actually look. You can control it. We've got our power control over it. We're at a hundred percent. So, all right, perfect. That's what we want. Pressing A. So, so our first volcano is just straight ahead. Oh, cool. Uh, a little bit under cloud cover. Yeah. But uh, yeah, can you see sort of that part of the 
the hill that's jutting up into the clouds. Yeah, like right ahead of us. Yeah. That looks kind of cool. So that's, yeah, that's Pacaya. That's what I've been talking about Hold all say, this year. Say, say the name again. Pacaya. You say Pacaya? Sort of like, like, yeah, like papaya, but Pacaya. Right. So, yeah, this, this guy has been active the whole year. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing, seeing the lava rivers. For a while, it had the lava river to the north side, so that meant I could see it from my apartment. Right. Uh, and then in the past month, it blew open another crater on the south side. So now most of the activity is on that other side. Oh, cool. So, so hold on. Do you... That's not, is it dangerous? Like, I guess I, I have like some basic volcano questions. Like, does anybody live over there? You know what I mean? Yeah, there is a town um, at its base, uh -huh. but sort of on a, on a side where when it erupts, when there are uh, lava flows, yeah. they're not entirely affected. Okay. If it's, if it's like a really, really big eruption and there's tons of ash, yeah, uh, they'll definitely get blanketed with ash. Oh, geez. All right, well, we're getting over but, there. Yeah, as far as the hike goes, you can you can get up there and you can get pretty close to to the cone and see it up close. You know, it's interesting. I, I this is reminding me. I have one uh, to to reduce speed. No, I don't want to fucking reduce speed. I want to increase speed. I have one. Uh, oh shit. Oh yeah, we can look down if anyone wants to look down. It can kind of look like that. It's kind of cool. Um, I have one volcano uh, story in my head which is of um, the the uh, Spaniards. Mm -hmm. um, when I read this book, uh, The Conquest of New Spain, and uh, when the Spaniards came to uh, basically conquer Mexico, and one of the stories that is told by the guy in that is that they found a volcano, the guy climbed up the volcano and like had a spiritual experience, and uh, fucking um, made that his coat of arms. So there's some family, some like old ass family in in, Span in Spain that has the like uh, volcano as their like coat of arms. Of yeah, it's, it's quite cool. Do you know where, which volcano this was, or what country? I could I could look it up. I mean, it was in it was in Mexico. It, it would be near where uh, Mexico de Efe is today. Okay, so probably um, the Popocatepetl. It could be. Which which is a mouthful of a name. Yeah. See, I know that one because of taking Spanish in high school. They're talking about sacrificing virgins to the angry gods in the chat. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, Someone, someone's got to volunteer. Yeah. All right. So volunteers we're, we're, tribute. We're climbing. This is going to look even more beautiful when when the sun comes up. But um, and also, let me see. I, there's a way for me to set up wow. a uh, a map um, so we can see where the hell we are. Um. Maybe like there, and then I can do. So, yeah, I don't know. You can see this map. We can, I don't know if we want the map or not, but there is a map there we can kind of screw with. Is there a way to zoom? Oh, yeah. Yeah, zoom out. All right. That's kind of cool. Um, all right. On my screen, I think this is the volcano. Uh, yeah, that silhouette that you see down there is, is, the, is the volcano. And you can see the tallest part would be the main peak. Uh-huh. And, and that's basically where it's been erupting from uh, for the first months this year. It's and turned. then, uh -huh. you know, right now they're, we're starting to see that light colored area on the south side. Uh -huh. That's those are like giant lava fields. It's literally just, you know, black rock. Uh, right. Very like lunar Mordor kind of ambience. That's crazy. General Raja asking how I know so much about volcanoes. Uh, I feel like we're just getting started I won't, with volcano facts. Yeah, yeah because I won't shut up about them on Twitter, basically. <laughs> no, because I've, I've climbed them a bunch. Like this one that we're flying over, I've probably climbed, shit, maybe 80 to 100 times. Holy shit. Uh, you actually are into this. I, yeah. Like since, since I was a kid, very into hiking and camping and outdoors. Right. Uh, and then more recently into trail running and um, 
we don't really have you know long chains or long trails that you can go for a long distance uh here it's more about just choosing a peak and power hiking up and then just bombing it all the way down okay super fun wait so just to be clear this thing on the left of the screen that's that's it like i'm, I'm gonna move my mouse on it that's the actual volcano like the yeah the hole the, the yeah i don't know what the technical term is for the volcano hole i, th I think they call them craters You're right but we can we can we can go with volcano hole if you want <laughs> oh yeah look by the way we got some sunrise happening this game is going to look see. so much better when the oh, light nice. comes up, I should—I probably should have done it a little earlier or later. Hold on, let me. Does it tell me the time of day? There's some way for it to tell me the time of day. I don't know if anybody's uh, flown a. Huh? And I got to turn off these tips really quick, really quick. Just off. Turn off the tips. Okay. Sorry. Right. Thank you for that. Plan safe. Um, it's just automatic prompts that come up. Yeah, I mean, they, they try to tell you what to do and stuff. Um, no, all right, don't mate. let anyone tell you what to do, Kersey. Yeah, no, hell no. Um, but you can tell me what to do. So, so what do you? What do you? What should we do? I mean, we're, right now we are flying west. Um, we could fly a completely different direction. We could. You're in yeah, charge, let's man. let's keep going west. C can you point it looking forward? Yeah. Um, all right. So, so basically, this this direction, this bearing, will yeah. have us flying in an almost straight line. Yeah. Along the entire volcanic chain in Guatemala. Oh, cool. Uh, and you have them all in a line because it's one of the tectonic plates. I guess one of the like uh, oceanic tectonic plates uh -huh. bumping up against another one, and they sort of create that uh, uplift all along the same line. Hold on, someone uh, says... So anyway... Wait, wait, wait real fast. Someone said, Maflavin, I know who you are. I know who you are, by the way. Hi, what's up, dude? Thanks for coming by. The screen in the cockpit on the bottom right, there is time. The screen in the cockpit on the bottom right, is this the one? Is it 6.06 in the morning? I think it's 6.06 in the morning. Oh, there we go. Let me check what time is so official sunrise is here right now. Yeah. Looks like 6.16. Yeah, right on time. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to get it. All right, I interrupted you. Keep going. You said the tectonic uh, place happened here. Oh, yeah. So Guatemala is a very geologically active region because we're right at the intersection between three tectonic plates. Uh huh. So that means lots of volcanoes. We have three active volcanoes, um, which are pretty active all the time. And then lots of tremors and earthquakes. So... And are the, exciting place to live in. Are the three the one we just passed and some of, the, some of these that we're coming up on? Yeah, so Pacaya was the first one. That's the one I've been volcano posting about. Yeah. And then right up ahead is Volcán de Agua. That's, I think it might be like the fourth tallest one. Um, already extinct. Uh-huh. And fun fact, it has the second most perfectly shaped cone after Mount Fuji. The second most perfectly shaped cone after Man Mount Fuji. So when you're saying that, you mean that the 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 volcano is like a cone, like it's a cone shape. Like yeah, like a very symmetric, nicely shaped cone. That is a nice you know how Fuji cone. just looks perfect, it looks amazing. Right, right. Um so yeah, we, we got the second one. With the caveat when you view it from certain angles, because right. it's not perfect from all angles. You haven't seen General Rider's boobs yet. That's true. We haven't. <laughs> my, my, that might dethrone the second or first position. Uh huh. Perfect cones. Look at the look at these clouds, dude. We got some stars up. This is great. A gentle pink. And oh, look at that red. Oh, that's the sun. Dude, we might need to go toward the sunset for a bit. Or the sunrise. Let's go. Should we just go? Let's do it. Right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're right at, but we're right on these volcanoes. Should we go over to the other one and then turn around? Or like... I'd say let's go straight for the sun. All and, right. Uh, let's go. And we can get back oh, to the volcanoes no. with more lights. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's go. 
Where this? Where'd the sun go? Okay, it's left. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting nervous. Don't worry about it. <laughs> go into the light. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're going into the light. All right, th this is gonna be beautiful. Amen. Straight for the light and then surrender to it. <laughs> Just surrender to the light. All right, I'm gonna need to get a little more alcohol in me. I'm, I'm, I'm having this to taste, you know. I, I'm loving these mm -hmm. these red clouds. Holy shit. Um, yeah, get get some more juice in. It'll, it'll improve your flying. I can show you. No, let's have a little juice. Fly low on the volcano. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll fly by. We do have our volcano. That's it right there, right? The one that we're. Do, do you have a? Do you see the altitude we're at? Yes. In fact, I could move all of our shit so that others can also see it. Why don't I try that? Should I do that? I can move everything. Yeah, I was just asking because I know this volcano is at 9,000 something. Yeah. Um, so if we fly like right at 10. <laughs> this pilot is wasted. We'll, we'll have a nice view and, and not die. So right now I'm just editing my Twitch stream while um, the plane just kind of flies itself. I think it'll be okay. Um, I'm just trying to get everything lined up so that you guys can see the, uh, let's try this. It looks pretty good. Looks kind of good. Oh, nice. Now you can see the altitude. Okay. Well, we're turning off. And, oh. <laughs> we can see the altitude and how we're losing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, see sometimes the worst things happen when I grab back control. This is a metaphor for spirituality, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Fuck it. We're flying this rig into the sun. Look at that sun. Look at that fucking sun. Beautiful. Yeah, let's let's fly in that direction for a bit because the the Pacific Ocean is not too far away. Oh yeah. And uh, I bet we can get some nice views of yeah. dawn colors reflect reflected on the ocean. Dude, beautiful. By the way, for anyone who's interested, I, I can say one thing about how I fly this thing during my this is my masterful knowledge of how to fly this plane down here at the right corner where my mouse is moving is the thing that says trim um basically if i'm flying straight this i learned this about planes and i'm going to explain it in layman's terms for you if i'm flying the plane it's just going to start turning itself down into the ground or up into the sky which screws you in a different way if you don't adjust the trim but i can move the trim so like if i push up on the trim right now look it starts going down up is down you know it's like inverted now if i push down on the trim it like cancels some of it so it's like without me even touching it it just starts going up or down or whatever i don't know that's just a cool mm. thing uh, what what would be the equivalent of trim in our lives and in spirituality now we're talking give me a second to think about that one while i pour myself trim. well it's a little correction it's a it's a it's a conscious correction <laughs> yeah right so, I mean, I want to hear your views on some of this stuff, but just because you asked that question, I mean, one way I kind of think about it is like you're using your mind all the time, right? And mm -hmm. every day, all day, even when you're sleeping, you're, you're taking action with your mind, you're doing stuff. And I guess trim is a way of, it's sort of like you end up having to do stuff in order to counteract other stuff you do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, if you're always, you know, like when people think that they're like too excited, they'll say things to calm themselves down. Or maybe they've been saying things to calm themselves mm -hmm. down in their mind since they were kids or whatever. That's that's my trim metaphor. That's what I would say. Sort of like uh, managing other stuff. But, it, but is it stuff that even needs to be managed? Maybe I'm not even understanding properly what, what the trim does here on the plane. <laughs> I, I, I think we're not going to do so well on understanding the plane, but we can we can talk about the stuff. Sir yeah. Volgafri says, this is a metaphor for theorizing and spirituality. You think more, and while you think, the plane starts to wobble. I just want to see you guys crash into small volcano. Wow. All right. I, I respect that take. That, that's respectable, but no, we're going to keep safe. By the way, I can look at the plane, and I don't know what this all means. Oh, there's shit on the plane. So, hold on. Look at this. Look at inside. Look wow. at that. Look at the glass. Oh my god. <laughs> Did we get shot on? <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. It's uh it's ice. Oh, I see. 
Oh, look, and you can wait, go back. You can see us inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, like we can see us. That's that's us. I believe that I am the... This is wild, actual frost. Yeah. Look at that. What a shot. This is great. So it must be using actual um, web conditions, like real time, no? Uh, I think so. Well, real time for when, for the time that we set. I think it is. So this actually, we turned off course. We started turning left while we were screwing with the sun. Because I don't think this would have happened if we were flying in July, let's say. Right. It would happen right now. I mean, I, yeah, I don't, I guess you're right. It's December. I mean, I don't know how that works. Like maybe it's cold up there all, all year long. Yeah. I thought it was pigeon shit or seagull shit for a second. Right. Uh, Vogel for just so you know, you can turn the plane in a bad way. And Clint says the flight has officially been hijacked. You can turn the plane in a bad way and it'll fall apart. So I don't know if I don't know if it freezes or not. I just don't know enough about how they actually do it. But all right, we get the sun. Yeah, we got some sun. How far do you think we are from the from the Pacific? Oh wait, we could look on our map. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually going oh. parallel. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanna. Take the shortest route to the ocean. You yeah. have to sort of tack to right turn. a bit. Right. Though I do like flying into the sun. That is nice, yeah. Trim is parents, guides, mentors, friends, anything that helps keep you on track. Mm. That's pretty good. All right. Wait, so, so uh, Harvey, that is your real name. Um, it is up here at cruising altitude. At cruising altitude. Um, what what should we talk about? I mean, we we can. I am kind of just enjoying chilling, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But if we want to get into our well, our program, yeah. Program. Yeah, let's let let's start riffing on something because it all it'll be a while to fly back to the volcano, so we can you know right. We can wax poetic and then get back to the tour. Well, tell me about... I, I don't know. Just tell me about some stuff you've been thinking about. Tell me about some stuff you've been tweeting about. We could talk about stuff that we've talked about on Twitter. People can ask questions um, about yeah, anything. Yeah, so maybe, maybe a good point is you recorded this YouTube video where you talked about the relationship between the outer world and our inner world. And you sort of riffed on it specifically with architecture and how spaces are designed. I think you gave the example of a cathedral and how it's a space designed in a very specific way. So that when you enter, uh, very likely you'll have a certain type of experience internally. Right. Uh, and then I sort of quote tweeted that YouTube video of yours and, and riffed on it a bit myself, Welcome looking at it more from the angle podcast. of uh natural landscapes so, so yeah you know how how stand on a mountain summit versus looking outside the window of a moving train right uh, versus being lost in the desert how all these different landscapes are going to influence uh that inner landscape of yours right uh so so i think that's that's an interesting place to start given that we're cruising up above the clouds and have this expanse view of, of Guatemala below us. Right. Which, by the way, if anybody wants to see anything, let me know. I'm just kind of looking where I think it looks pretty good. We got some, like, rivers, I guess? Um, over here? Shit. I'm yeah, kidding. lots of rivers. Um, yeah. Let me think about so, that. So, yeah, maybe maybe just to check in on that, like, what this this environment, this virtual environment that we're in right now, Right. What what does that bring up for you internally? Like, what kind of mind space are you in? Yeah, it's interesting. I I think it's interesting also because I mean, what's happening in in one way of looking at it is that we're it's it's very beautiful as a the game is beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's beautiful because the world is beautiful, right? And it's like simulating the world. Um, 
And I think for me, it's interesting because at the same time, I'm also like sitting in my room, right? It's like I've been sitting in my room that I've been fucking sitting in for like months, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, yeah. Right. And so there, there's different elements of it. I like that we're I like that we're chatting. I like that we're doing. I, I guess yeah, it's like the environment in some sense is kind of a, a pretty expansive thing. Um, we're about to enter some clouds, by the way. It's getting getting very murky. Um, we're kind of losing the sun and getting the sun again at different points. Um, the it's all good thematic transition. Yeah, yeah, thematic. Yeah, let me see if I can go a little higher, just a little bit. Um, by the way, thanks for following, Clint. Um, so the environment. What what interests me in this space is basically that the reason I I, I think about things like like a cathedral for some fucking reason I keep losing altitude. Maybe my plane can only handle a certain amount. When I think about a cathedral, the reason I think about that a lot of the times, a lot of the time, is because I'm thinking about modern life and how modern life affects our minds. Like the mm -hmm. thing that really interests me is basically, um, I mean, like basically the thing I'm afraid of. I mean, it, it's sort of my own angle on it is in some ways a little bit dark. The thing I'm afraid of is that the world gets us to believe and do crazy shit that we should not be believing and should not be doing in in these very strange and insidious ways i don't know if that makes any sense um but things like when when you look at the world and it's you know like architecture right you don't want to be mm -hmm. like paranoid about this or whatever but like it's mishima time yeah um the uh you know you'll, you'll see all these people on, on twitter like there's a lot of like trad architecture accounts right where yeah. they're basically like you know we you know like the globalists have d destroyed our birthright and you know we should be living in these beautiful places and there's something relatable about it right where it's like they're showing these like you know like a cathedral uh we got through mm -hmm. the clouds they're showing like you know these um you know like wrath of non right these like beautiful like villages and stuff like that and you compare it to these boxy ass buildings that you know like these like corporate buildings and things like that and like where everything's a square and everything's made of glass and it is kind of fucking ugly so i guess that that's part of it for me that's like why i think about this topic N not not specifically that angle on it like i think it goes there's a lot to talk about and i i guess i'd say about you know how does our how does education like get us to think like how how does the physical environment get us to get us to feel and be um yeah yeah, and, and just understand when you say that the modern world gets us to, to, you know, believe these dark things or get into dark spaces, you're referring to, to like, that, those physical environments that we've created that are no longer inspiring and they're these boxy environments and so on? It's, it's a, well, the physical environment is the easiest way to look at your overall environment, which includes your psychological environment and your social environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah, for me, let's see. I, I, you know, thinking specifically about the, the physical environment, like let's say the, the buildings that we create and how we plan our cities and so on. Yeah. Um, you know, two aesthetics that I absolutely love are Art Deco and Art Nouveau. Right. When I walk into a building that's decorated in that style, it's super, super invigorating. And it's a, it's a reaction, it's an experience that I don't normally get in other buildings. Right. And, and I sort of ask myself, like, why can't we have more of this, you know? I'm, I'm losing and... altitude in a good way, by the way. I'm intending to lose altitude. Because it was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, so yeah, I, I I do think that we've we've lost, um, like maybe we don't value aesthetics as much anymore, like as a culture, as a civilization, and we end up creating all of these living spaces, spaces that we work in, etc., that are optimized for you know the margins and profits of the real estate developers, and not in service of something higher you know like some subjective inner experience that we want to occasion in whoever walks into that space part of what i find interesting about this though is that i feel like i think that that's true 
Also, oh, we got a little bit of ocean coming up, by the way. I think we're starting to see some kind of some kind of ocean. Um, I think that that's true, but it's also interesting to me that the virtual is like a kind of a new thing, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, you know, having a beautiful virtual world. I'm thinking of like Pinterest, right? It's like if I want to mm -hmm. see something pretty, I, I can just go on Pinterest, and there's a way in which is also just super accessible. Um, mm -hmm. And like, that's different. I don't know. I I mean, I, I don't know if I have like a conclusion or, or like something to make of it. Um, I guess yeah, I, I, I guess like conclusions we can wander. We can, yeah, we'll just this uh, this thing that you mentioned about the the digital worlds is interesting though because. You mentioned Pinterest, and my mind just went to thinking about someone whose physical environment might be kind of ugly. I don't know. I'm imagining someone living in right. some backwaters place or super decrepit favela. Yeah. But they have internet access, and they have their Pinterest account, and through that, they get to access and experience different aesthetics right um there's so that's that's definitely interesting but uh there's a I lovecraft see... there's a lovecraft story that's basically about this um mm -hmm. i don't know if you've read much lovecraft um there's a very it's very no, short no, no. oh it's it's worth looking at um there's a very short it's it's almost not even a story i might be able to find it i might be able to google for it and put it in the chat while the plane flies itself all right, I'm taking my hands off the wheel. Uh, let me find this. Um, is it Ex Nihilo? Um, is that the It's basically this very short story about... Look, the, the plane is starting to turn. Looks good. Lo Lovecraft look, is... Look, no hands. And like, the, uh, it, it's basically... the the Here, I'm going to turn this back on course. Back on course. Now I'm going to keep Googling. Um, this is in Czech. That's not what I want. I might have to find it later. HP Lovecraft Archives. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it's basically um, a story that helped me understand uh, Lovecraft, the writer, better. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of his stuff is about like weird alien beings and like horror type stuff. But there's a subset of it that is basically just about like people in like dark gray concrete apartments or whatever like the vibe of it is like a person in like a dark gray concrete uh like apartment who dreams or something like that and that's where they see these amazingly psychedelic and beautiful landscapes and part of it it's it's almost not even a story um it's like a just a vision of a person who is sort of basically trapped by modernity i mean he's writing like the 20s um, where, you know, in, in some ways modernity is still just getting, getting rolling. I mean, it, it's maybe rolling in earnest. Um, and basically these people who like sort of like reach these like basically psychedelic states, um, uh, not through drugs, but through dreams, like through, you know, um, through weird, weird happenings, like with these sort of alien gods and stuff. Um, it's just mm -hmm. a very short one that I really wanted to link to. Yeah, so uh, I'm super interested in one of the comments that got dropped here. Yeah. Clint, Clint Ehrlich, I don't know how to say that, says the the bad Stalinist architecture of aging ex-Soviet states now has more character and charm than the mediocre internationalist style of generic Western developments. Something important about this. Soviet architecture. Uh, That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, I yeah, this, this this comment hits hard. I think about, um, I had a trip in Russia, checked into Vladivostok for a weekend and did a couch surfing stay with someone in like a proper Soviet, you know, ugly ass gray building architecture. Uh -huh. It's almost like you take a cinder block and turn it into a, an apartment building somehow. Right. But I agree that this, you know, quote, ugly building somehow um, feels more more real or more, uh, I mean, I hate, I hate to use the word authentic, but that's what's coming up. Right. That, that feels more real than like some super gentrified 
brick building in in you know a new area of a city uh, yeah. where they knock down a bunch of warehouses to to create you know expensive housing. Well, it's interesting to I, to me because I think that the Soviet era is real to us in the way that like it can it can only be real at a distance, um, mm -hmm. where it's like. Yeah, there is kind of like a Wes Anderson vibe. What was the movie that came out? There's a movie that came out. Did Wes Anderson make a movie about Soviet? That had a Soviet? I don't think so. No, maybe, uh, was it, uh, what's the one? I don't know if Vodra vibe is in the chat. It was his, um, it was his profile picture for a second. Uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. Okay. There's some stuff. There, there's like a so. There's like a so. Yeah, 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 Grand Budapest Hotel. There's like a Soviet funeral. Um, there's a Soviet funeral thing that has this very like. I don't even know how to describe it. Anyway, it's very Soviet. I think there's a way in which like this stuff is like more real to us. Because, I don't know what it's like to people who didn't, um, who did live through it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. I guess that's that's definitely something to be considered. You know how. Uh, how it's different like, the perspective will be from from a, a traveler than someone who actually lived it, you know? Right. It's it's like the pyramids. It's like the pyramids. We can just be like the e Egyptians. It was all one thing. Really, it was like six thousand years of things. It's like a stupidly long yeah. amount of time. It's outrageously long amount of time. Um, but we can kind of collect it up as one image or one picture that we understand from modernity. I mean, I don't know. It's also, it's depressing, too. I mean, Soviet architecture is depressing as hell. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, it, yeah, I, I think I do buy that there's a way in which it, can, it it does have something more than a lot of this, what Clint is calling the mediocre internationalist style. I don't know much about architecture. I wish I knew more about architecture. Yeah, in my case here in, in Guatemala City, it's interesting because we have... Uh, By the you way, know, the, the very, very cent yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, w w we've reached the ocean. Do you think we should scoop back around? We we've also got this map, um, which tells us our, our heading, so we can scoop okay. back around. We could, we could go in the you know, go above the ocean. I don't know, we still got fuel. Um, we could just follow the coast, we could keep oh, going we after have, the sun. We have fuel limitations, that's right, yeah, yeah. Show us the if, bottom if of the ocean. Of fuel, <laughs> <laughs> if we run out of fuel, what happens? We crash, and then can could we theoretically start in the air at any given point we want? I don't really know. I don't really know how it works. I so I turned off true crashing. I could turn it back on. Okay. <laughs> well, let's let's uh let's fuck around and find out. Yeah. I mean, we could go straight. We could go right. I could save it. I could hit save right now. <laughs> I we could jump back to that. And then we our, can go our back. Our plane looks terrible covered in bird shit, by the way. Yeah. Look at that. It. I mean, it does look cool. I think that's all frost. <laughs> if you crash the stream, you <laughs> end. If not, very fake. No character. Yeah, that's that's hardcore mode. Yeah. This is amazing. Zoom ins. Yeah. But yeah, going back to architecture, like I think about my own city, Guatemala City. Yeah. We have the city center, which is Spanish colonial architecture. Uh -huh. You go there and it's it's a little bit um, decrepit because it's not like the nice part of the city anymore, but like you, you can see what the architecture was um, once upon a time. Yeah. And, and you see the, the, like the neo-colonial architecture, you even see some art deco buildings. And then a little bit outside that circle, you have the, the somewhat more recent municipal center, which is this cluster of government buildings. And I'm blanking on the architect's name, but it's all done in, um, shit. I think it's like modern, modernist architecture. Okay. I'm actually going to Google this right now, 
but it's like a very specific um, style of architecture. And it's actually like one of the, like the, the worldwide examples of this style along with, with Brasilia, which is the capital of Brazil. And if you send me a picture, I could even, I could, I might be able to put it up. Assuming the plane will keep flying itself. I might be able to put a picture up. Um, okay. Let me, let me look this up. Could be cool. Oh, we, we, someone in chat links North Korean interiors dot dot com. It's actually kind of awesome. That is cool. Yeah, North, North Korea North Korea aesthetics are crazy too. I'm gonna look at these again. There is something really. Huh, huh, maybe I can. I don't know how copyright works. Let's try something. Let's try something. Hopefully the plane will keep flying. You gotta let me know if the plane is going off, off track. Okay, I'm I'm not even looking at the plane. I'm looking at uh <laughs> these pictures. <laughs> okay. All right. So for for showing you a picture, uh, there. Am I sending you a link or what? Yeah, or put it in chat, or put it in chat. Huh? I'm getting okay. the plane. I'm getting the plane back on track. Is this working? There we go. North Korean interiors. This is kind of awesome, actually. I can, like, put it up. That's cool. All right. General Rogers, say hi to your mom for us. Thanks for dropping Good by. Good night, General Rogers. <laughs> um, Brasilia, a city boy best enjoyed from the internet. All right, so I just dropped uh, a link there. All right, cool. So, yeah, it is it is modernist architecture. I think this is a style that originated in Europe, if I'm not wrong, and I think it's somehow related to, like, Bauhaus. Yeah. Um, very, very, like, concrete-heavy. Uh, but there is, there is sort of a, a variety of that style that developed in Latin America. Right. And the two best examples of that architectural style are in Brasilia. So yeah, I don't I don't really know what the deal is with Brazil, but I think they had a different capital before, and at some point moved it to Brasilia, and therefore they had all of this new architectural development. Right. With with that aim in mind, like this is now going to be our capital. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yeah, the second example would be here in Guatemala. And whenever I drive through that part of the city, I I feel something amazing, you know? Like I'm, I'm looking at these incredible buildings. Uh, it's this very open civic space, you know, a space that right. is very inviting for, for people to enter, for people to congregate in. And... Sadly, that is the exception to the rest of the city, you know? I live in a part of the city where you look around and it's just a bunch of residential buildings. Right. Um, most of them, like, red brick buildings. Like, red bricks have nothing to do with this place, with, with Guatemala, with this land. Hold on, uh, let, let me understand no, something. Yeah, you're saying that the places that you like in Guatemala City, they look like this thing that I'm scrolling through on screen. No, this this thing that you're looking through, are you looking through the link that I sent you? Yeah, human scribbles. Is that what you put? Ah, uh, no, that's oh, that's, that's Clint's, Clint's link. Yeah, Here yeah, I yeah. am adding this to my mental model of Guatemala. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, damn. Uh, that, I I was like, those Harvey those finds his homie. <laughs> They no, are, no, no, no. <laughs> those, those do look amazing, but that seems more like off the beaten yeah. path Soviet abandoned sculptures. Yeah. Okay. But this is okay, what you're so showing. That, yeah, yeah. If you go up to the top picture. Yeah. Um, that that is the the like civic center of Guatemala. There's right. Like several several government buildings there, and. Um, cool. Yeah, it's it's just it's something very unique, authentic that you don't find anywhere else in the city. Right. And 
yeah, in my case, like, you know, right now I'm sitting in a, in a common area of my building and I have views of the neighborhood around. I see around, it's like a bunch of brick, red brick buildings. Like red brick has nothing to do with, with this place, with this land, with our history. Uh, and I really think that good design mm -hmm. should should be contextual. Like it should speak about where it is, where it's coming from, uh, and not just be some copy pasted aesthetic right. that is somehow going to optimize margins and profits for the real estate developer. And the thing is, I'm also not perfectly convinced that, yeah, I mean, mar margins and profits for the real estate developer. I'm not personally convinced also that the, like, that these things are actually that much better, even for margins and profits, if that makes sense. Um, like, I don't know. Like, I, I tend to think that when people are sort of like living better and it, if, if it really makes people happier and like more like flourishing, you know what I'm saying? To like, yeah, be in a well-designed place. I, I don't know. I expect them to make more money. I expect them to to be more interested in the world. Um, to yeah. Do more stuff. Yeah, that's um, that 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 is the shit. That is the part that like gets me the most riled up. Right. Is that. You know what's necessary to take your current crap design yeah. and upgrade it to a level that's like good design and actually is communicating some sort of uh i don't know some some aesthetic that really speaks to people's soul right that that shit is not is, is not expect, expensive you know yeah it's not it's not an issue about like you know expensive materials or this or that right it's really just about like understanding design properly and like doing it in a way that is relevant to the place where it's happening that's relevant to the lives of the people that are going to be living there and what kind of experiences you want to facilitate and optimize for right that makes sense by the way um just to check in on our journey here um i'm going back northwest um, yeah, I'd say let's let's go let's go directly north. All right, cool. I see I see volcano. I mean, I don't know if those are volcanoes. I see some. Oh cones. yeah, those are definitely volcanoes. But we wanna we gotta hit them all up. Okay, we gotta do it up. All right, we're gonna do it right. Let's go yeah. straight north. Very well. So let's see. Straight north we go. I wish I had some. Uh, you know, like jet packs on this thing. Into like like nitro, like Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah, nitro. <laughs> yeah. Says they so reduce... I heard the the. This is a total side note, but I heard the yeah. new Fast and the Furious. They actually go into space. It's just, <laughs> just a natural progression of. That's awesome. You've done all the ridiculous things. Now you got to go to space. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> space, Fast and the Furious in space. I would I will watch every one of those movies. This is, I, this is, I guess, another thing that I've talked about on Twitter, is liking shitty stuff. Um, I don't know if you remember my, my thread about this. Fast and Furious Zero G Drift. Um, I love shitty stuff. Uh, I, I love the best stuff, but I, I also really like shitty stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Tokyo Drift was great. Yeah, I think your thread was about how... Uh how you know being attached to highbrow content is sort of uh killing off that curiosity instinct and, and being able to learn from anything right um so what so what are some some lowbrow content pieces that are very special to you <laughs> lowbrow shit i like well well clint of course mentioned corky romano um which is I don't have you seen this movie? By the way, I'm I'm going I'm Please. going down. I'm going closer to the to the ground because I realize the clouds are pretty, but I'm actually liking the look of this like land. Yeah, this this is good. You're good. This is a good altitude. This is a good altitude. So we're flying we're flying over primarily sugar plantations right now. Oh, sugar plantations. Yeah, I think I think sugar plantations are our second major export oh, after sure. coffee. Got it. Oh yeah, Guatemala coffee. You always hear about that. 
Yeah, coffee, sugar, bananas. Right. And uh, yes, Corky Romano is an excellent movie. You've seen it? <laughs> yeah, That's of right. course. That's, great. That's all right. Um, Chrissy said that aesthetic can hinder curiosity. Yeah. I mean, it's not, well, aesthetic. I think it's not mm. true aesthetic. That, uh, I, I, I'm trying to not sound like a dipshit here. Um, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, what's my opinion? My opinion is that, like, I don't know, like, vi like, honestly, maybe this is from, like, growing up being a kid who, like, played video games, and some of my most meaningful... Sorry, this plane is turning all the fuck around, and I don't even know what it's doing right now. It seems subtle if you're watching, but this shit's, like, turning all over the place. Why is it going right? You're good, you're good. So, so you see... Okay, on the horizon, you can see on the left... Yeah. Two volcanoes that are like together and then one that's alone, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to aim for the one that's alone. Okay, perfect. What, what I was going to say is I, I feel like it, this might be from like the experience of like being a kid who I played a lot of video games growing up. And I think some of my most meaningful experiences at a certain age were playing video games, which were... You know, now, I mean, it's like Twitch exists. And even now, it's not even the most respectable medium artistically. Right? Um, like, video games are... You know, th there's money in it, even. You know, there's esports. There's all this shit. But I think part of it is just that a bunch of my... Like, m these meaningful experiences I had with, like, story, with, like, engagement, with different stuff like that, was in a context that was, like, inherently lowbrow at the time. Um, I think that might be something that kind of affected my... Affected my worldview. Um, where, to me, like, the lesson that I get, like, the thing that I get is, like... If there's meaning in a place, <clears throat> you want to be able to receive it, even if it's not in the right, you know, wrapping paper. Does that make sense? Yeah, so not not let, uh, basically not let the book cover uh, stop you from getting the meaning. From getting the value. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, I was just yesterday, I had a chat with a mutual and we were talking about this book, Tantric Quest. Okay. And, uh, and I mentioned how, you know, I ended up reading it because I saw it mentioned in a Twitter thread about what book represented a before and after for you. Uh huh. And the person who mentioned this book mentioned it, but also qualified it with, it's sort of cheesy to mention this, but like right. this is definitely the case with this book. And we, were, and we were discussing like why is it that people who read Tantric Quest are somehow hesitant to recommend it wholeheartedly, like fully, like genuinely enthusiastically. What, what kind of book is it? It's <laughs> so so we ended up. Let me feel the cringe. Classifying it as the <laughs> as the eat, pray, love for men. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like this this French guy, very into spirituality, <laughs> ends up exploring India and Nepal and so on, and right. finds himself in some tiny town in the mountains in, in I think, Nepal or India, I can't remember. Right. And stumbles on this on this tantrica, this older woman that yeah. uh, ends up bringing him into the tantric tradition, you know. Right. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, we, 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 we sort of talked about it and we came to, to one conclusion, which is there's some element of cringe around the male fantasy of being brought in by an older woman uh, who in some, you know, Oedipus complex twisted right. way might represent the mother. Right, right. And is that, that strong female figure right strong and wise uh but at the same time sexually attractive and you end up having this sexual relationship with her as as is the case in the book uh-huh and um and 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 therefore like you know displaying that 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 sort of interest in the book can right. end up being sort of um seen as shallow or something yeah in 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 the same way that he prayed love is, is can be written off as sort of shallow like right. oh yeah you know 
uh, middle-aged woman in, in a middle-aged crisis goes off to, you know, Italy, India, and Bali, and, and right. it's all these right. handsome, spicy men, and <laughs> uh, figures out all her shit. Right. Can be can, can be written off as shallow, as cringe, as whatever. But I think if you get rid of those reactions, like, yeah, absolutely, you can find uh, true insights, true awareness, true wisdom in novels and films like this yeah yeah i i mean honestly because this is the thing i mean you know pulpy accessible stuff is just pulpy and accessible right i mean it's like the reason people when people are distancing themselves from it for the wrong reason they're often just trying to be distant from something that's accessible because they want to be seen as the sort of person who only inhabits spaces where they consume inaccessible, specialized, rarefied things. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, part of it is just like, I mean, whatever. It's just like, don't be pretentious, I guess. Are, are we going in the right yeah. direction, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I just realized I checked out entirely about the trip. Yeah. Where Where are we? Can you Can you bear? Yeah. Let's see. Um, we got some. Vol we got something looking like a volcano over here. I I'm flying low, yeah. so we can see the. Let's 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 bear. Ooh, there's a big peak right up ahead. Straight ahead. Yep. Can you shoot? Can you uh, point straight ahead? Yeah, just just straight, right? Yeah, that that has to be Agua. Should yeah, I, zoom, I think we're good. Should I zoom on Quick. the map? Is that useful? Not really. I don't know if the map's useful. Do I still have you? Uh-oh. Harvey, say something. Why do I suddenly not hear you? I hope this plane keeps flying itself while I do some uh, while I do some tech support. Uh oh. Here we go. Someone's got to tell me if the if the freaking plane starts crashing itself. Output device. Harvey keeps saying stuff. Dog. Oh, this plane is starting to turn. Holy shit! We're having technical difficulties. We lo we we seem to have lost Harvey from the call. Unless you guys can somehow. Oh, he says, "Hold up." It's a nice, pleasant descent, isn't it? Yeah, we're we're at a. I mean, if you look at the altitude meter, we're, we're kind of just cruising. It doesn't even feel like a descent. No, I, I think it is a descent. Okay, Harvey's is one second. All right, we'll, we'll get him back. I'm going to keep going towards these uh, volcanoes um, because I believe that's what he would have us do. You know what I'm saying? Uh... <laughs> Hold up. Clint, I knew you were... <laughs> Wait, actually, I haven't read this. Oh, yeah, The Basket. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I've read this quote before. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. You, uh, Harvey, I cannot hear you, but I also started screwing with my shit. Keep saying stuff. We're going to get you on whereby, dude. Let's just do the whereby. What would a pilot say in this situation? They'd be like, Ksh. "Well, ladies and gentlemen, wait, hold on, hold on. this is the wrong thing." No, 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 wait. It's the it is the right thing. We're doing the right thing. Stand by. Yeah, they'd say stand by. All right, Harvey. Come on in. I do look like Freddie Mercury. I've heard this before. Most... Oh, man. The plane is going exactly the wrong direction. 
Chad Ben Franklin, the virgin lover of hot women. <laughs> Look at the sky. Harvey, where are you at, brother? I've heard that Freddie Mercury comment most prominently from a speaking of speaking of let me in coach Vec we should get you on what well, we should get you on one of these one of these why uh oh well, I just heard him I just heard him yo dude say something yo okay can you I hear me I hear you <clears throat> audience can you hear Harvey hold on I'm gonna Keep saying something. Can you hear me? Please say something in the chat. Harvey. Can you hear Harvey Krishna? Keep saying something. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. We're good. Excellent. We got a yes. All right, man. We're back. We're back in action. We're back in action. I, I hear a tiny bit of uh, of echo. It, it, Actually, the, no, I don't hear anything anymore. Yeah, I was just fucking with it. I was just testing. All right, cool. We're, we're back on the volcano Let's tour. We're good. With Harvey we're Krishna. Back on the tour. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right press play again on my christmas playlist okay. yes did, did you just glitch out our fuel is lower than it was before it's uh you know i'm i think let's just roll with it and see what happens yeah fire the torpedoes <laughs> Jersey, fire the torpedoes you can all right Whoosh. Whoosh. i'm gonna do it with my mouse Pshoo. That's all the torpedoes you get, dude. So where where did I get cut off? Um, I don't remember. Who knows? Are we back at with, the with all this oh, with all this juice? Who knows? With all this juice, who knows? I think I'm on my second cup of whiskey. I'm I'm feeling good, by the way. I'm I'm kind of feeling it. Are we back I'm at the cone? Too, they uh, these drinks hit nice when you're close to. Yeah, so this we're we're back we're back at the perfect cone. This is Volcan de Agua. Uh-huh. And uh, as I was saying, the first capital of the Spanish colony of Guatemala was right on its flanks on the north side. So sort of where you see the clouds. Right. Right on its flanks. That's where Ciudad Vieja was. And uh Down one here. fateful day there was a massive, massive downpour that filled the bowl of the crater. This was already an extinct volcano. So, the, so its crater was just imagine like a proper bowl. Like, by, by the way, we got, you put sorry, in. we got a request to have you be louder. Do you have a way to control that on your side? I can louder. Yes. Let's see. I am louder now. Am I loud enough? People requesting oh. more volume. I've got a, I've got comments. a mixer. I got a volume mixer. I can probably use, um, Go to you're on, yeah, fire. All right, say something, Vecnan. Vecnan, please say, Am I loud enough? Is that too loud? I can go, I can go all the way. <laughs> I don't know what these percentages mean. You are the same, go all the way. Baby. He's just saying that. He's just saying that. Hold on, wait, these volcanoes look better right now. Look at the screen. I, I think you're better. I think. All the way on system preferences. I'll just get closer to the mic. Okay. I wait. You're saying I'm louder. I can move this away. All right. So I am full volume on system preferences and full volume on the actual. Great. Oh, oh, false. I'm not. Oh yes. Yeah, I am full input volume. When you say he, who's he? He being Harvey, presumably, is quiet. Why would you be quieter? Um, dude, should we try real quick to get you back in Discord? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Because I got more. Um, I'll just mute on whereby. Yeah. And see if I can get on Discord. Okay, say something on Discord. All right, I'm now on Discord. Okay, you're loud as hell to me. Sounds loud to me. 
Okay, I got a little bit of echo on you. Can you say something again? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. All right, blah, 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 blah. This is good. Vecnin, blah, blah, blah. Do we get the Vecnin approval? Better. Better. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So, where were we? Where, where, where did our perfect cone-shaped oh, where'd it go? extinct volcano go? There it is. So as I was saying, one fateful night, there was a gigantic downpour of water that filled this crater bowl to the brim, and one of the sides, you know, the least structurally in integral side just collapsed, and there was a massive mudslide down its northern flank that just uh -huh. absolutely covered Ciudad Vieja, which was the then capital of the Spanish colony of Guatemala. When are we talking? And, um, oof, I think, let's see, we became independent 1821. Uh -huh. This must have been the 16 or 1700s. Okay. No shit. 1700s, probably. Yeah. So we might be able to see that from here, maybe. I don't know. It's something. Yeah, if you if you just aim at, at the at the very summit, yeah, you might get a sense of that bowl because it's still very bullish today. Right. Beckman says, "Does that mean old? Yes, that means old. Viejo vieja. Ciudad vieja, old city." Uh, so after after that capital got destroyed, it got moved literally just three or five kilometers away to what is now known as Antigua, uh -huh. which also means all, means like closer would be ancient. Right. Uh, and that's like a, a really beautiful tourist destination. It's all Spanish colonial architecture, cobblestone streets, hmm. very popular weekend getaway for people in Guatemala City because it's just 45 minutes away or an hour right. and a half if there's traffic. The city's called Antigua. And, uh, Antigua, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then that was the capital up until a major earthquake in late 1700s, early 1800s, and it just destroyed the city. And that's when they moved capitals again to what is now Guatemala City. Okay. Where are we on the map relative to Guatemala City? Um, if that is for Candeagua behind us, then Guatemala City is further behind the volcano. Because you can, like, look at the plane's ass again. Yeah. Then Guatemala City is, like, way back there. Way back there. Okay, I also, see. Also, congratulations, Vecten, for kissing a girl tonight. Congratulations, Vecten. Shout out to my boy, Vecten. For macking on the ladies. <laughs> All right. So next next set of volcanoes coming up. We have on the left Volcan de Fuego, which in English would be fire volcano. Mm -hmm. Very self-explanatory. This is the second active volcano on our tour. This volcano has been active for forever basically uh -huh. it will literally like on the dot every 20 minutes throw out a little puff of uh smoke and ash really I see this shit from my from my balcony yeah and if you see it at night you realize that along with that smoke and ash there's also a little bit of lava and you'll see you know the, the rest stuff and sometimes the, the lava falls on the peak and the peak will be glowing uh for a little bit. Hold on, question. The left one is a volcano. The right one is... Is this the... The right one is not a volcano. Yeah, so so left, um, with sort of lighter colored, that's for kind of fuego. It's lighter colored because that's very recent stuff that's been erupted out of the crater. Whereas on the left, it's Volcan Acatenango, technically a, a different volcano, now extinct, and that one um, 
It's like the third highest one in Guatemala. That is my favorite volcano and my main training ground when I'm in, in trail running season. Wait, this one we're right in front of right now. So that so that's Fuego. Oh, okay. I will, I, I will climb Macatenango, which is on its right. But if I'm doing like a really intense train day, I will sort of like climb Macatenango, go down to the saddle between both of them. Yeah. And then climb up to the beginning of the, the light part of Volcán de Fuego. Yeah. Okay, so we just we just passed Volcán de Fuego. Yeah. So we're passing it is Fuego beautiful. Macatenango. I love, look at this so, shot. Yeah, that... Those, those two are, are, for me, the jewels in Guatemala. I'll probably be climbing those sometime in the next week, so I'll be posting photos. No shit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. MCON857. Thanks for coming by. Let's see. Time, to, time to catch up on the, on the comments here. But you got to make sure I'm going towards a volcano, by the way. Oh, yeah. So just, just, just keep on the same line, and, and we'll... We're go hitting every volcano. Yeah, so you see, you see that next pair up ahead. Yes, that's where we're going. That's the next one. That's where we're going. Beautiful. I'll just. Which, by the way, if we want to get a little bit edgy and risky, it would be cool if we can fly really low right between both of them. Let's fucking just, do it. Just an idea. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> All right, Vecna's engaging in uh, mountain forming discourse. I don't know if right, you want to. Magma, tectonic. Reading uh, here. Mountains aren't All right, real. So, so Vecna, I am. I am absolutely no, no expert in. <laughs> post red sail land is what post reds don't know a lot of things um but what little i do know about these volcanoes is you know we have three tectonic plates all bumping up against each other creating a ruckus in the case of volcan de fuego i think it's a it's a strato something volcano which means that its eruptions are pretty violent there's no such thing as a peaceful lava flow with Volcán de Fuego the way you would expect with, let's say, that volcano in, in Hawaii, or, or even Pacaya, the one I've been lava posting about all year. Volcán de Fuego, it has its little tiny farts every 20 minutes, like a little bit of gas, a little bit of ash. When it's nighttime, you can see that there's also a little bit of molten rock because it's glowing red. That happens every 20 minutes. And then every couple years, it'll really pop off in a violent way. The last time was June 2018, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the full shebang, like pyroclastic clouds going down its south flanks, totally Pompeii on that was in its path. Um, Towns destroyed, lives lost, serious shit. But yeah, that's that's just the reality of, of living on a land that is so geologically active. It's like hard for me to honestly imagine. I I like of so hold on, how do you okay? I'm gonna ask some really stupid questions right now. Are we no ready? Thing. <laughs> All right. Wait. All right. Good. Uh, so hold on. There's people that are getting, that are getting killed by volcanoes, right? Yeah. How are people getting killed by volcanoes? Because don't they go off pretty often? So you kind of know where they're going to go off. And so the shit's already been destroyed there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I guess that. Or is it like hundreds of years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the interim between one super violent eruption and another might be long enough that people will subjectively feel that this is now a safe area to live in. Mm -hmm. And they live there and think that all oh, is good and well until, boom, the black swan arrives and fucking pyroclastic cloud just flattening your house and 
everything around you. This is like in the Bay. I used to live on the fucking Hayward Fault, um, which is if you have a, a, a graph, like a map of the area, there's like different colored, you know, like indicator for like how fucked you are when the big one happens. Right. Yeah. Um, and I lived in like the deep red zone um, of the fucking Hayward Fault where like, you know, they call it the liquefaction zone where um the ground like turns the liquid it like turns the i don't even know what that even fucking means um yeah but, yeah and that, hap that happens in, in 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 earthquakes yeah 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 but um but yeah it's a thing you know in in this last eruption of volcan de fuego which is the big one that we saw just back there um there were warning signs that it was about to like really pop off there is a super fancy, wealthy golf club right on its southern flanks. Yeah. And and they were aware of these warning signs, and they were responsible and, like, put in the, evacu the evacuation orders. Like, everyone out of here. Right. You know, it was super safe. Everyone got out. There was damage to property, but no damage to human lives. Right. Meanwhile, you have these, like towns of, of you know lower class lower education people there were no effective warning systems and right. even if there were people didn't take them seriously i mean you have that in the states in like florida um for example or, or like even New Orleans, you'll he hear about people who are just like nope i'm gonna ride out the hurricane right they, they stick around right 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 yeah so same 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 mentality uh and that and that leads to human loss yeah clint is saying think about mount st helens the side of the mountain was bulging before the eruption and people blew that off i wouldn't mind a picture of that that, would, that sounds i mean crazy to look at yeah gotta, you know what's gotta gotta respect the bulge <laughs> respect the bulge <laughs> The, the respect the fucking bulge. <laughs> yeah, something big is gonna happen when you see the bulge. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous. All right, so up ahead we we have on the left. Yeah. Volcan Atitlan. Uh huh. And on the right, Volcan Toliman. You said and... Atitlan and Toliman. Yeah, Atitlan is also the name of the lake, which if you look a little bit to your right, you will see. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, this that, this lake is my spiritual center. This lake is one of the kundalini belly buttons of planet Earth. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Hold on. I want to save be, just so that I can... Uh... Just so if we die... To come back there. I want I want to come I want to go down deep. Hold on, did you want to go dive in between these volcanoes? Yeah, fuck it, why not? Yellow. Yellow. So so there are the the official list of peaks in Guatemala are 37 peaks. Uh-huh. Sort of a sort of a joke list because there's some of some of the peaks on there that do not deserve to be on there. And then there's yeah. some like Peaks that are actually hard to get to that are, I guess, not prominent enough to be on the list. But anyway, of the official list, um, I've done 34 of the 37. Uh huh. And this one on our right is one of the ones that's missing for me. Yeah. And it's it's a challenging one, not necessarily because of the altitude, but because there are no good trails up it. So, am I seeing like palm trees? There. What what kind of is this like a jungle? Like, what's the actual kind of? It's um, so at this altitude, it's probably a what you would call a cloud rainforest. Uh huh. Yeah, so it's high altitude, but it ends up being a rainforest because it's constantly in the clouds, and that humidity ends up supporting a lot of. Uh, plant life that just get the air straight from the atmosphere you know like a lot of orchids yeah. and just you know any fucking big tree with big trunks is just gonna be right. covered with other plants i'm loving this lake dude yeah 
All right, let's actually, yeah, let's let's tour around. Let's uh, bank, bank right. Yeah. Uh, here to our left is Volcan San Pedro, another volcano. Right here in the cloud. Yeah. Yeah, Volcan Atitlan, man, is a godsend. It is absolutely heavenly. Yeah, it looks heavenly. God damn. I, yeah, actually, so right now that I was in San Francisco, met a mutual, heard that she was doing this, uh, this program of Tyler Alterman out in Portugal, uh -huh. met a tribe rallying point. And he's a friend of mine. Uh, yeah, man, it just got it just got my ideas flowing, and I thought I would like to do exactly that. Yeah, here, exactly where we're flying over. Yeah. So. Oh, Sounds kind so of appealing. That's definitely a project I'm trying to I'm trying to manifest for some time in 2021. That sounds cool, man. I, I love this lake. I want to be in this lake. I In fact, my plane seems to want to be in this lake because I keep losing altitude. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Turn to, to, to a little bit to... Yeah, maybe go towards like that other side and then head towards the left. Okay, so cross and then go, go like west. Yeah. Like cruise along that shore. But uh, yeah, my idea... Oh, no, 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 oh, no. What's happening? Oh, no, no, wait, we're good, we're good. We're good, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Fuel, fuel issues? No! <laughs> no, the fuel's oh, good. This is exciting. Uh, I think we're screwed, dude. I think we're just fucking... Okay. <laughs> All right, water landing. All right. Whatever's happening, this is, no. this is exciting. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, okay. so, so I, I turned off crashing, so I think we just... Cr I think... <laughs> I think because take off? <laughs> oh no. wow! Let's just take a moment to like really sink into the present moment of this environment. It's yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go kayaking. I, I at least I saved the game. I don't know what the fuck happened. I I don't know why that happened. Clint, are you feeling present? This is great though. Oh wait, am I supposed to shut the fuck up if we're being present? No, we can we can just chat. I guess this would be a good moment to mention that there's some people that say there's a, a sunken Mayan city at the bottom of this lake. Really? Yeah. So so one of one of the places I was trying to direct you to was one town called San Marcos, and San Marcos is an epicenter for hippies and any type of new age spiritual seekers. Uh huh. And uh, you can sort of see why, like, Lake Atitlán is a very, you know, you have the volcanoes, you have the water. Yeah. All the elements are present. And uh, and now we find ourselves <laughs> floating in the middle of it. <laughs> I don't th I don't know if I can go underwater. I'm going to, I'm going to jump. I'm just going to reload. Let me reload. Okay. Um, and we'll be back in the air. Um, how, uh, let me ask another question just cause we're, we're getting a lot into like the history and stuff. So, um, who, like, what is, what is the civilization that lived in Guatemala in the past? So if we go all the way back, it would be Mayan. Mayan. Okay. Yeah. Like the, the Mayan civilization was primarily in what is now Guatemala. Yeah, all right, we're uh, back in the year. Yeah. And then with the downfall of the Mayan civilization, you do get uh, certain groups that still reflect some of the Mayan culture, but mm -hmm. are now separate from it. Right. All right, we're, we're, all right so let's see. We are... All right, so we're right... Right where we were. A minute behind where we were, yeah. So should we go check out that uh, that little town? Should we keep following this lake, going through this little area with the mountains and stuff? Yeah, may, uh, maybe I would bank right and fly over the lake because that'll be a nice view. So that we can continue right. on the on the volcano chain. Excellent. Let's do it. <laughs> so maybe to to to. Uh, 
dive into a different topic. Yeah. You know, we both interact on Yukio Mishima a lot. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to hear a little bit about how Yukio Mishima stumbled into your life. And uh, I know you've been reading Sun and Steel lately. Yeah. I'm curious about what, what that's been like, what effect it has had on you. Well, what's your... So, yeah, let's see. I heard of Mishima when I was in high school, I believe. Um, and there were a bunch of... <laughs> this is the moment where Harvey reveals he is BAP. Um, there were a couple of video stores by me. Um, and I was buying... Basically, the video stores were closing down because... Um, like Blockbuster was taking over all the little video stores and then Blockbuster was turning down, was closing down. And okay. I bought like all of the DV, the martial arts DVDs and shit and, and VHSs that I could buy at those places for like a dollar each. Um, and I, I had a summer where I watched, I was watching Kung Fu movies and shit like every fucking day. Um, and I just, you know, picked up this like enormous collection and whatever and I think somehow I ended up watching Mishima Life in Four Chapters, even though it's like not a kung fu movie. I was just like going for like the most Asian shit I could find, basically, that like seemed cool and like had some tangential relationship. Yeah. Um that's right, and that's how I grew my mustache. That's <laughs> that's what that, um the Mishima mustache. Welcome Morty Lynn. Props to me for creating a Twitch account at four AM to watch this. Hell yeah. Dude, serious props. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. We're just talking about um, how I stumbled into Mishima while looking for like Bruce Lee shit. No, that's actually what happened. Um, no, but yeah, and I watched this movie. I think it's Stephen. Got... Okay, there's something about this goddamn lake, dude. Because every time I fly over this lake, the plane starts going down. It's it's a uh, it's a Bermuda Triangle of sorts. So just right. Just manifest <laughs> your exit from it, and it'll it'll happen. Is this the hippie town? Am I over the hippie town right now? Let's see. Uh, so right, right where the wing is pointing is that sort of where the hippie town's at. Yeah. Oh, cool. So probably like right in, right in the energetic vortex. Right. We will be through the turbulence soon. Right, right, right. This plane does want to be a submarine. The end of hippie town in three, two, one. Um, that's how I ran into Mishima. So I mean, basically. I, you know what also what was part of it is I was reading this guy, um, some white dude. Oh, dude, look at the city. It's like at a way high altitude. That's actually crazy to me. So, by the way, every, everything we've been looking at has been roughly at five to 6,000 feet altitude. Okay. Like this, this lake is about 5,000 something altitude, like roughly the altitude of Denver. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're flying over that high part of Guatemala. Right. Huh. There's something going on here because I'm not good at flying planes. And uh, do you see my engine? Literally. <laughs> my engine is at not like that high and I'm just losing speed. What is going on? There are more airplanes in the submarines in the sky thinking I me. Do you see how my engines are just like dying? Let's see, engine, yeah, we both seem low level. What is, why is my engine off? What, um, I'm pressing, what would that be about besides, like, gasoline? Or... Dude, I, do I look like I know shit about planes? I don't know anything about, I, I literally, you, you don't. I know shit about video games. These are power controls. These are, there's a parking brake. Did I just turn it on or off? No, release. No, 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 hold on. Release maybe, parking maybe, maybe sit, save it so we can respawn from here if shit hits the fan. Yeah. That's a good idea, huh? Let me just get out of the... <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to save. I'm going to save. I'm going to save. We're all very safe here. I, yeah, there we go. I okay. feel anxious in the cockpit view because I don't know what's happening outside. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, this is life. This is... Why is my engine, like, off? 
Oh, no, no, no. Maybe my engine's on. No, maybe left means on. Is the plane on? Yeah, the plane. I don't know how planes work. I'm sure the plane's on. Okay. We're good. We're cruising. Okay. Fuel's running out. So that can't maybe, be the problem. Maybe though. cruise, like, bank a little bit to the right. Straight into the wall? Yeah. Without yeah. hitting it. Clint says maybe try turning it up. Yeah. Turn <laughs> it off and turn it back on again. I'm sure that'll fix it. I don't know if I'm going to make it over this hill, dude. I, I, I'm going to go left. I'm going to go left. We're going to go left. Do, do a left, and everyone listening in the replies, please send good energies for us to clear this ridge. <laughs> send an actual <laughs> on-office pro-level tr troubleshooting. Yeah. Send an actual pilot. We need... Does anyone know a pilot? <laughs> we need a pilot or at least someone an expert at flight simulator. Like, I, I'm just cruising. I'm trying to take it easy, but, like, speed is... Speed's kind of low. All right, we can we can we can fly around the ridge at a low altitude. That's 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 fine. Yeah, like oh this no, is, this, this might be a nice way to enter this valley. Yeah, because this is the deepest valley in Central America. Really? If you bank all the way right, we're gonna go to the deepest. Sure that, yeah, I, I gotta get this thing to stop beeping. I'm glad I do not hear any beeping. Yeah. For all the listeners, Kersey and I couldn't figure out how to sync music playlists, so we are each listening to our own holiday-themed playlists. All right, we're going to try to make it over this. This is not going to happen, right, dude. Right now, I'm listening to, to a no, song No, dude, we're fucked. We're fucked. Relaxed. We're fucked, dude. <laughs> we're no, fucked. we're good. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. <laughs> yeah, no, we're fucked, dude. We're fucked. Pull up! <laughs> no, we're, ah! no, we're fucked. <laughs> All right, everyone, heads between the knees. <laughs> Put down your tra oh my god. We're this we're is, in the prairie. Nice forest. We're okay. slowly sliding backwards. <laughs> I think this is where we have a picnic. Yeah, we're right on time. <laughs> we're right on time for a picnic. So, so, sort of curious to fall in this mountain because there's one of these mountains in this area. Yeah. It might be this one or it might be another one that it's sort of tricky to climb because it's heavily mined. Like, you know, oh, mines you step on and blow up. Really? Yeah, from from the from our like sketchy seventies, eighties gorilla period. Right. Uh, there's a few peaks that are very heavily mined, so you need to like be careful how you go up them. Right. Look, I can flap so, uh, the rudder. Praise, praise God that we didn't land on any of them. Yeah, flap that rudder. <laughs> yeah. Sign that we're alive. Maybe I can, I'm gonna put. Up, oh, I can put up the wheel. Maybe I don't know if that's gonna work. We're just still slowly sliding down the. Give it a little flap. Well, I'm catching up on the chats. We have. Uh, the plane needs to do some IFS <laughs> internal family systems to talk to the parts of the plane that are resisting. That's great. I don't know about this awesome. plane, man. If only there was another... If there was another... Yo, why don't we start again and I can leave from, like... Like, what are these GT... I don't know what these are. Are these, like, little airstrips or something? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. There's... there's a, There should be an airstrip... Airstrip in uh, Quetzaltenango. I don't know what the, what the symbol is going to be, but, like, yeah, exactly what you're zooming on... I know there's an airship there. GT520. All right, let, let's try again. Let, I'm going to try to exit okay. and with a better fucking plane. I, 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 there's one plane that I know works. Okay. Um, I'm going to go use the restroom at the back of the plane. I'll be back in a minute. All right. Why did you turn off the ability to see the guys in the plane liquefied? I don't know if that's an ability. Oh, shit, I can see Curzi in the plane. Yeah. Wait. Uh, he, he had to tell us what the name was of the... Uh, of the uh, of the airstrip we're going to, I don't know where the fuck we're going. Um, where the fuck we started? Managua. I don't know what any of this shit is. 
All right, well, I'll pick my plane that I like. This is the one. God, they all look the same. Where's the one that I like? I think it was this one. The Daher. The Dayer. It's pretty solid. I'm going to go with that. My name wasn't taken because I'm not a basic ass bitch. So half of you are, or half of you just, just 747. It's too, it's not that mobile. He's coming back. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. That might not happen. We're in outer space. Mm-hmm. We got to, you got to tell me where to go. Where are we going again? Um, well, well, what are we in the mood for? Continue the volcano tour or something completely different? I don't know. I feel like continuing volcano tour is good. That's that was my okay. default. Unless you had another idea, Hawaii. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe we can take off. Uh, try Quetzaltenango. Q U E T Z. Quetzaltenango. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing Quetzalcoatl International. That's not it. We can also uh, look visually or whatever. I don't know if that's... Where were we before? Guantanamo. We started MGGT, right? Yeah. And then... You can sort of pick a, a random point in the air to start from? Uh, we can pick these spots or these little teeny runways. There's like little teeny runways. Uh, okay, so, yeah. so go back. You see, you see, you see that... The tiny lake next to the white box. No, go back, go back, go back. You're zooming in on Mexico. Back, back, back. Oh. Uh, okay, MGMT La Aurora. Go back to that box. There's a little lake to the left. This thing? Yeah, shaped like a bean. Yeah, the bean. Just over yeah, by the bean? The bean. So, Santiago? So we, were, we were a little bit to the left of the bean. Like that. I, I oh, Quetzaltenango. Quetzaltenango. Santiago, perfect. Santiago. Oh, Santiago better, or, or do you like Quetzaltenango? Uh, let's do Quetzaltenango. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yellow. It's time to so, fly. So we we'll, we'll want to go. We we'll want to fly straight <laughs> south. To okay. The next volcano. Perfect. I'm gonna pour my third. The third. I'm just pouring my third whiskey third over scotch. here. Yeah, third scotch. What's, what's the name of this whiskey again? It's very complicated to remember. <laughs> Lagavulin. Let's see this show Lagavulin. up on the stream. There's there's a slight delay. I, uh, there it is. I there it is. In Scotland and all those fucking road signs, it's like being in Middle Earth, man. Uh huh. Like really long names with a lot of apostrophes and tildes and. Right. It's very confusing. All right, we, we are back, and we're on the ground in Guatemala with a better fucking plane, I'm pretty sure. So we're just going to do this. Nice. You can just go down, grab that little throttle control, and push that to 100%. Hell yeah. All right. I've never actually been in this airport, so this is a novel experience for me. Also, Vecnen is asking... M. Kersey, thoughts on La Froilac, however you say it, Talisker, <laughs> yeah. Kyle Ila? Uh, La Froig, Talisker, Kyle Ila. I haven't had the third one. Uh-oh, my plane is going off course. Um, I like La Froig. I like Talisker, but not as much. My very favorite is Ardbeg. And up on my shelf, if I weren't flying a plane right now, I would go grab it down. I've got two different uh, Ardbeg bottles, but that's my shit. That that's my go-to. I have had Green Spot, and I love it. Steep saying stall. Yes, my brake was on. Uh, we're we're up though. We're up in the air. By the way, you can see you know this cool shit going on. Let's put away the put away the wheels. Put away the wheels. Everyone can watch the wheels go up. Bye bye wheels. Um, it keeps saying landing gear. No, we're good. We're good. We're up. We're off the ground. Um, my pops used to import green spot from Ireland before it was common here. Highly addictive. I love it. And you know who told me about it? Oh, good night, Texas. Thanks for showing up, dude. Texas gun. We love Texas gun. Am I going south? Gun is gone. Good night. 
Uh, bank a little bit more to the left, and you'll see a big ass peak. I do. I see a big ass peak. There we go. Beautiful. This music feels like Mario Sunshine music. Man, I wish I wish we managed to find a way to sync, but I'm also having a great music experience. Yeah. Who told me about the green spot was uh, Prince Vogelfry, Sir Vogelfry or Frey. I don't know what it is um, in this here stream chat. Tell me about, I think it was you. He's probably there. Um, yeah, I love green spot. I wanted to try the other spots. I wanted to try, uh, keep saying that. It's free. Vogelfry. Vogelfry. So yeah, up ahead we have this uh, this hill that's heavily forested all the way up. Mm -hmm. That is called Cerro Quemado, which means uh, burnt hill, basically. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very volcanic all the way up, and to get to the very summit, you have to climb through this. It's almost like a cave, like this chimney, and do a little couple of rock climbing moves it's interesting and then behind it we have santa maria which if i don't if i'm not wrong is the third highest peak in guatemala um, it's got a nice cone right now yeah that one has a nice cone as well extinct now but there is a very epic account of its explosion in probably sometime in the early 1800s by some spanish colonial person who wrote a lot uh -huh. and um, I suggest that we continue flying over it to the south because on its south side it has what is basically a volcanic child uh, volcanic child Santia Santiaguito yeah which is uh -huh. like little, little Santiago and that is the third in our three active volcanoes and that's another volcano that also, like, on very regular intervals, is popping off its volcanic fart of ash and smoke. And, right. And um, it's a very lunar landscape to go explore. It. That's, that's one of the three that I have to check off to finish the complete list of peaks in Guatemala. All right. Per so w the one we're over right now, you said, is a dead volcano. Yeah. Man, look at this landscape. This is beautiful. Do you know what what these light spots are? If you know what I'm talking about, uh, like So like right on the peak? Oh, we got so the Right on the peak is light because it's purely volcanic sand and rock. Like nothing like no vegetation is going to grow on that. Uh-huh. And now directly below the plane, it's still light and like that is all the um, sort of the lava field, the volcanic uh -huh. explosion area of of Santa Maria. Uh, okay, let's see. Go back to the view. Maybe like looking at the tails, the tail of the plane. Oh, yeah. You mean looking backwards? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you see sort of like this this triangle, right? Almost like a volcanic vagina. At the very <laughs> top of it uh -huh. is the summit of Santa Maria, uh -huh. and then more so at the base. So, like all, all that you that you see is is a massive explosion of Santa Maria. It just fucking blew its guts out on this south side. Right. And then a little bit further south, where you start to see a little bit of vegetation, some green sh areas. Yeah. Uh, I think that's already Santiaguito, which is its "quote unquote" volcanic child. This little it's thingy, actually, child. This yeah. With the cloud over it. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah. not not with a cloud over it. I might. Let's see. I know I'm seven seconds behind you on the video. Yeah. It might be. It might be actually what we're seeing under the cloud, right under the plane's left wing. Okay further down like by yeah clint is posting the picture of um the uh 
cacao with Harvey on a volcano. Hell yeah. Glenn is posting a picture of Mount St. Helena bulging before it fucking exploded. Oh, it's the St. Helens bulge, right. Because of yeah. those volcanic bulges. Respect the bulge. That's That's so been our tagline for the... Uh, for the evening is respect the bulge, you know. Yeah. I could be a Harvey. <laughs> so I guess we're he still heading currently southwest ish, right? Yeah. Yeah, so w w what else do we need to see? Um, from here on out, there's two major peaks but they're not as dramatic as the other ones because right. they are taller than the other ones but they don't uh jut out as much from the base as the rest uh -huh. so, and it seems it's pretty cloudy in that direction so i'm very open to to whatever to anything really well so this plane so look we're, get, we're actually going above twenty thousand feet the other one tapped out at twenty thousand feet so this yeah. one we can go, I think thirty or something. Let's let's fucking take it to its limits. Take it. Let's take it to the top. Sounds good. We'll just have uh, Jackson Five, mommy kissing Santa Claus. Come on, so vibes <laughs> are good. Yeah. Look, we're in we're we're in the the smoky clouds. We're we're like a, actually like above the cloud or like in the clouds right now, which is fun. There we go. All right, so go, going off uh, Vogel phrase comments, Curzi, are you lifting again? Maybe that's a good good uh, cue to head <laughs> back into Mishima and right. your recent reading of uh, Sun and Steel. So basically, yeah. So what do you what do you want to know? D dig in. So I. So maybe my quick backstory on Mishima. I yeah. stumbled on his biography read that biography first fascinating character and yeah. then dove into his fiction which was an amazing experience because every novel that i read yeah because i was intimately uh, acquainted with his own life story i could see him like as as a person shining through the characters and the plots right um but sun and steel is one that i haven't open into i don't know if it's fiction or non-fiction you can tell me but uh i'm curious to hear a bit about your experience because i know you've been reading it or read it recently and uh what you think is its relevance for everything that we're living through today yeah real quick Juan creve said hey bro s p h z i don't actually know what that is um I don't know what that is. Um, maybe that's a place. The so Mishima. What's the say, man? I mean, I've been reading Sun and Steel. I'm not too far into it. Uh, Vogelfree has actually I probably finished it or, or read more of it than I have. Um, mm -hmm. Sun and Steel is a weird book. It's nonfiction. Um, it's kind of like a weird philosophical work. And he's talking in a very, it, he's not very, we're talking in a very analytical way. Um, he's kind of talking about um, his experience of trying to uh, exist in a different way than he has existed before. Like the, the way that I would translate it. And he talks a lot about like the problems with language and okay. believing basically that language separates you from the way I understood it is believing that language separates you from reality. Um, whereas the body has its own kind of like independent existence um, that is like not dependent on words. And it, it's, it's sort of like his effort to like reconcile these is sort of how I've understood it um, so far. And I mean, basically it got me lifting again. So like, so yeah, yeah I mean, what, what about, what you read got you back to lifting. Mm. Honestly, it's like, what is it? I mean, like, I think a lot, right? Like, I just spend all my fucking time thinking. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's... Well, 
Oh, we got a we got a follower. Welcome. I, I don't have a tagline yet. Welcome to the podcast. Um, the uh, well, welcome. You just got cursed. What was it? You just got cursed. No, but I don't. But it sounds like something bad happened. <laughs> you got cursed. They didn't uh, get cursed. They they joined it's, my it's, thing. It's, it's still in beta. <laughs> it's still in beta. Tagline still in beta. Thanks for the follow. Um, what is it? It's just that I feel like a pussy, dude. <laughs> That's the answer. I It's just like doing philosophy all the time is... By the way, we are way high up in the air. We're almost at 30,000 feet. Um, mm-hmm. It's basically that, like, he seemed to be communicating... How would I say this? He seemed to be communicating directly on a topic that is very real and very hard and almost impossible to talk about. Um, Mishima is in some ways a very bad writer, arguably. He's not a very, he's not a very clear communicator. And also it's translation from Japanese. Um, and in some ways he's a bad writer, at least for this nonfiction. And like, it's, there's nevertheless, he's talking about something extremely real, which is like the way that thought detaches you from life. Um, Mm -hmm. and this is a tricky thing because I, I'm not anti-thought. I can't, could not possibly be anti-thought. All I fucking do is think and write about what I'm thinking about and tweet about what I'm thinking about and like talk about what I'm thinking about. But there's right. something about him that is he he's also like that. That's part of it. When you read the dude is like he's a thinking he's a thinker. He's a writer. He's an, he's an ideas guy. Um, no, the language is good. The language is vulgar free comments that he thought the language is beautiful. The language is beautiful, but the ideas are not clear. Um, the, the ideas are not like clear clear cut they they're they're evocative of a real thing but it's almost despite the structure of the concepts um or almost despite not not despite the structure of the con- the concepts despite the structure of the exposition um and um i have a response to that clint in in, in a second um the does that make sense what I'm talking about, Harvey, with like the ideas that the ways that words like sort of separate us from being? I think he, he nails that better than anybody. Yeah, I, I do get a sense of how his use of words and playing around with concepts takes us off into this different dimension that is very uh, it feels it feels like a very purely intellectual aesthetic domain somehow divorced from reality and in in my case specifically i really enjoyed inhabiting that domain Mm -hmm. Uh, when when i stumbled on his biography and then dove into his fiction i was very much the type of person that you know i spent my time up in up in the clouds of thought um but at the same time enjoyed you know it was sort of this interplay between getting very heady into thought but at the same time uh diving into the depths of self and i feel like by the way we found a weird spike we found a weird spike (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. this this must be one of the one of the monoliths that are that are popping up around the world right now (laughs) right i think this is a fucking glitch (laughs) what the fuck is that we're this, this is amazing I'm actually curious what what to speak next to it is. Uh, oh, on the left. Yeah, this might. Looking looking at the map, I think this is Tajumulco, the highest peak in Guatemala. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Um, I'm obviously not talking about the, the monolith. Th- this is the highest peak in Guatemala, dude. <laughs> yeah, this, this is actually so Tajumulco is the second highest peak. This this uh, unannounced monolith is the highest peak, and uh, it was put there by we're not exactly sure, but they probably had very intimate relationships with with the Mayans and uh, helped out with their construction of the pyramids and so on. Yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> all that makes sense. Let's let's do a flyby and, and zoom in on what's going on at the top. Whoa! This is the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah, there's there's some definitely anti gravity field going on here. Wow! <laughs> Holy shit! Jack and the giant beanstalk. <laughs> yeah, Jack and the beanstalk. That's right. That's awesome. Wow! <laughs> That's just a glitch. This is a fucking glitch. I like it though. God, God bless the glitches. 
this is this is what I was talking to you about earlier. That in New York City, there is a building that is that looks exactly like this. It's like a fucking pencil sharp building just jutting into the sky. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, what what were we talking about? Mishima. M Mishima is himself dealing with the difficulty of like language. Mishima believes that language separates him from reality and then instead ah, yeah, absolutely right instead think, sun and steel think, brings him back that's the idea is that like he goes out in the sun and he finds that there's this like high principle of like light and growth and energy that lifts him out and then he has this very beautiful line i don't remember i don't know how to convey it perfectly but it's that the steel itself is like the essence of the opposite of the sun it's like dense and hard and cold right but that by lifting it he becomes more like it's opposite it's like it like defines this opposition into him um interesting do you know when sun and steel was when he wrote it in in the timeline of his other works i don't know what year is sun and steel okay yeah i'd be curious about that because um 68 is sun and steel i think he dies in 74 um okay and sort of towards the end yeah Clint, Clint earlier asked w whether we should see his um, should a reading of Mishima be colored by his bizarre suicide in the same way that Evola's philosophy culminated in his needless paralysis I actually don't know anything about Evola um, I think that our reading of Mishima should be colored by our understanding of his suicide um, mm -hmm. and I yeah go ahead Harvey yeah, yeah, I was gonna agree. I think I think Evola. I'm not super familiar, but I, it it rings a bell from the the Kali accelerationist crazy stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, anyway, not 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 to get um, off track by Evola. Absolutely, I agree that Mishima's life in its entirety should color in any reading of his fiction. And, yeah. Uh, I remember writing about this in a reply to one of your Mishima threads about how I was infinitely grateful to have first stumbled on a biography of Mishima, mm -hmm. which, which this is really the first case with any author where I first got to know the author and his life and his ideas and his, you know, very non-conventional and idiosyncratic life, and then moved on to read his works, his works of fiction. Right. And... Uh, it, it is an incredible experience to read fiction, read this, read about these fictional characters and the things that they live through and be able to grasp uh, at what was, uh -oh. you know, what, what, what's, what, what's the connection to actual Yukio Mishima's life behind that story. Right. Have you watched the movie? Uh, I'm halfway through. Okay, yeah. Side, side note, that was a nice roll. You like that? Let's, let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I had fun with it. a little bit more aggressive with the acrobatics. Yeah. Can I just do a straight up barrel roll? Let's find out. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. All right, roll, we did roll. it. Yeah, roll, roll. <laughs> Dude, it's, this plane is handling it. If I turn back on... If I turn back on the, uh, this is really good. If I turn back on the crash mechanics, it might shred apart in the world. But what about a, a, a roller coaster or loop de loop thing? Uh oh, like a like a like a loop de loop. Good yeah. try. Barrels, barrels, easy mode. That's, that's... All right, ready? Do we do we dive? Do you dive before you go into a loop de loop, or do you just go? All right, I'm I'm pulling up. I'm pulling up. I like I like the idea of diving. All right, there's a problem with pulling up, which is that I'm just fucking stalling. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Everybody in the in the <laughs> chat, please send good blessings. Dude, I I think I just did it. All right, all right. That's. I yeah, think I just did. At least like a. It's at least a seven point five on the, on it's the like a, rating it, scale. It's more like a weird, just like backwards, like limping. <laughs> oh my god! 
This this is good. This is very uh I don't know how to get more speed, dude. I can I can dive. This is getting very acrobatic. Very yeah. artistic. Yeah, I'm gonna dive as and get a lot of speed. You can see the speed on the left. We're we're getting faster yeah. and faster. It seems right. like Sir Vogel Frey has very good advice on flying planes. Loops without crash mechanics are like masturbation <laughs> Dive, dive, dive. <laughs> These loops are weird. They're they're something weird about them. I don't want to call them elegant. It's, All right, we're, it's we're, almost religious, you know. There's like there's like a brief moment where time stops, and it's just the very crucifixion shape <laughs> of suspended in the air. That's right. Torah, 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 yeah. Here, this is what it's like from the inside. We're going to do it from the inside. Holy shit. That's actually awesome. Okay, that's yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. I like this. Yeah, this, <laughs> this will get your stomach <laughs> screaming a bit more. Wow. You know, I actually know a woman who, who paid a Israeli fighter pilot to do this with her to just take her in the air and like do some of these crazy loops. No. <laughs> Mishima talks about the spiritual feelings in planes. It's a great scene in the movie. Yeah, the, I think the in, from the inside is fun. Let's do it again. All right, here we are. Yeah, so let so let's um I wonder if there's a way we can talk about the movie without getting too into details where people who haven't seen the spoilery. I mean, yeah, we don't... Uh, yeah, just the structure is... All right, we're going to loop again. We're going to loop again. YOLO. Nice. We're yeah, pulling back. Yeah, this one high-level comment for me was... I watched the... I, I still haven't finished that. I watched the first half. Uh, the strip that was in San Francisco, and I was very interested in how they set up certain scenes. Uh-huh. The way you would set up... Um, Shit, I'm blanking on the name, but like a very traditional Japanese play, you know, like it was like kabuki or something. Yeah, like kabuki. It wasn't like a, a realistic setting. It was a very much theatrical stylized setting, and yeah, very stylized. And I found I found that direction show is very interesting and yeah. very appropriate for Mishima's style. Oh, interesting. So I haven't actually had the chance to read much of his uh, fiction. Oh, we get another weird peak in the distance. We're going to go over there. I haven't actually gotten a chance to read his fiction. I basically have watched the movie. I've read about the guy's life. Um, do you think the resurgence of interest in Mishima on the far right is interesting, given the nominal opposition to homoeroticism within the same circles? I think that the new far right is actually just not opposed to homo eroticism i or or like i don't even i'm not like in that world so i wouldn't really exactly know well, um say, say more about this and, and i guess before you answer yeah I'll, I'll add to this um when i was watching the mishima film i remember i was going to tweet something about it and i did a search on twitter mm -hmm. you know, keyword mishima filter people that I follow, I stumbled on one tweet by this one guy I follow, I can't remember his name, but like, he's based in Mongolia, and the tweet was, Sun and Steel is gonna be a definitive text for the next decade. Uh-huh. And I haven't read Sun and Steel, but like, my immediate take from that tweet was, I think this is something that's in the same neighborhood as bronze age mindset yeah i mean i might be and I'm, and i might be totally wrong but i'm curious what what you think about that given that you've been reading it already no it is i, I mean that's the thing it's it's the it's the baptists are into mishima like that's who's sort of championing his, his thing i mean you know i mean like there is a um there's a connection there i mean like mishima himself was was like far right in some sense he was far right you know for his time he wanted to return to you know the bushido code and the military um the military ethic and the military uh aristocracy i believe and total loyalty to the emperor and um you know he was against westernization and he was against um 
uh, liberalism, right? So there's a way in which it's a natural thing to pick up. Um, and there's also something in it, which is like his life just is inspiring to a certain type of person and not inspiring to other types of people. Um, and th that's also a sort of an interesting sort of a litmus test. Um, yeah. Like who, what's the type of person for whom a guy committing suicide in a very public and performative way that does not result in this in the success of his mission his nominal mission what's the type of person to whom that appeals it appeals right. to somebody who, who sort of wants something that isn't necessarily rational or reasonable um and, and doesn't see that as essentially being a bad thing um like yeah like idealist at, at, at all costs you know yeah and and the thing is, to, to me, Mishima is a depiction of a person who consciously and explicitly. Um, so what I read growing up is is the Hagakure, is this like 1700s text about uh, the sort of samurai code. And Mishima actually wrote a book. He wrote there's a book that's called Mishima on the Hagakure, and it's just his thoughts on it. Um, and a lot of the the ethos in that is sort of the idea of like being prepared for death and like choosing it um deliberately uh that that's sort of the the ethos of that work and i i think that's something that mishima took to heart and saw as like being very valuable for a variety of reasons um is this in the same vein as the book of five rings not really i, I would say not really only very loosely in the sense that they're both like japanese uh semi-esoteric works um this is later than uh musashi and it's more like about like social spiritual code. Um, it's a lot about like the the like disposition of being prepared to die. Basically, uh, is a lot of what the high Gray is about. It has a lot of connections, honestly, to um, you know, like Stoicism, to like Marcus Aurelius and that sort of thing. Um, I'm I'm curious about the the elements of homoeroticism. Yeah. And um, I have many thoughts on yeah, this. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm curious. In what ways might that be something that like subconsciously attracts people to his way of thinking? You know, like I'm, I'm thinking here about his emphasis on his physique, for example, body, right. the body as temple, and creating it into into this pristine palace right um and and how that may be woven into these um i mean i, I don't know where you would where you where you would graph mishima is thinking into but like whether it's like far right or or bronze at bronze age thinking type of stuff like what what is that thread of homoeroticism what is the significance of that in all of this that we're talking about i think it's i think it's mishima's obsession with beauty i think that's the key thing yeah i think that that's part of it i think he basically by the way we're coming up on one of these bizarre monoliths that don't make any goddamn sense I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that there's a second one in guatemala <laughs> yeah you should visit this sometime this is extremely yeah, cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to go post about this this week. Yeah. This is beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Strange. Look, there's even more I'm in the sure, distance. I'm, Look at this thing. I'm sure uh, I'm sure Jeff Bezos has the penthouse at the top. Yeah. All right, we're going to dive. We're going to dive. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, we hit it. We ran into it, but we're okay. No, no. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my God. We're still going. Cult of the body. I'm seven, I'm seven seconds behind the video, but yeah. I'm loving this no crash feature. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty convenient. The, the friendly monola. Yeah. Clint's mentioning a fi fighter in the UFC, Akiyama, who developed a Mishima-like homoerotic cult of personality around mm -hmm. MMA fans. I'll have to check that out. That's, that, I'll, I'll Google that. Um, all right, sweet. That was awesome. Wow. No. I just want to say this monolith is beautiful. 
I mean, basically, to me, one of uh, Mishima's essential features is his ascent, is his obsession with beauty, and so yeah. it's that the I mean, the act of killing himself for what he believed in, right? He says, you know, I want to make a poem of my life. That's that's his line, right? I, I that's I, I think a line that really essentially uh, captures something essential, which is, um, it's. I don't want to call it irrational. It is irrational. Maybe irrational just is the right word for it. Um, mm-hmm. But that, that seems to like when you call something irrational, it's like you're denigrating it. Um, uh-huh. And, um, but, but Mishima is a, I don't know. I think he just represents a different way of reasoning about the world, a different way of existing and something that a lot of people find beautiful because it's so stylized and yet it's also real. It's aesthetic and it's real at the same time. And you have to decide whether yeah. you think that that's a... You have to decide whether you think that that's just a big illusion, right? Or whether it's a... Whether it's valid, right? Um, yeah. No, I, I agree. And I think it would be a mistake to try to categorize him as absolutely this or that. You know, like put him into a very confined category. Um, I would try to portray him as this highly conflicted figure that had a very interesting relationship with the ideals of beauty, aesthetics, and so on. Oh, wow, we've got a very <laughs> sexy Asian man here on the screen. Good, good night, Sir Vogelfree. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> yeah, always, always adding great stuff to the chat. Um, but yeah, had a, had a very interesting relationship to to aesthetics, to the male physique, to you know, he's very into bodybuilding, treating his body as a temple, as a palace, and sculpting it as that. Um, and then, of course, had this this sort of conflicted relationship with his uh, attraction to both men and women, and how that played out in Japanese society when you know. I remember what decades he was living it through, but like twentieth century, uh, yeah. Twentieth like century. He's yeah, a very twentieth century figure. Most open times for these topics. Yeah. And um, you know, when I when I think about it personally, you, you, for me, you know, he's in the. Krishna, yeah. what, no, no, I was just gonna throw out there that he's in the the Castro district in uh, San Francisco. You know, a, like traditionally, like a gay part of town. Basically, I they yeah, they yeah, yeah, yeah. you heard about this? They put a star for him or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it might have been you who posted a picture of of that of that black and and said Mishima would laugh about this. Is that you? I don't. It might have been. I I sometimes post things and then forget that I posted them. I don't think it was me, okay. but it, it's possible. It, it, it might have been someone else, but yeah. someone posted a picture of the plaque in honor of Yukio Mishima in the Castro District of New York, of, uh, of San, San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah, no. I mean, and, uh, and, and with the comment that Yukio Mishima would probably cringe at this comment. I mean, he 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 re- rejected a lot of things about American society. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like someone just Googled that he was gay and they're like, well, let's put him on here. You know. Yeah, yeah, and just just sort of appropriated yeah. him to the cause, but uh, but no, I agree. There's there's something very, at least for me, very attractive in his extremely conflicted relationship with beauty and ideals and tradition um, within the context of a world that is somehow giving up on these things. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I I see it. I I, just, I want to read more of his stuff. I you know to really get an understanding. Um, every time I look back, it's like the the picture shapes up a little different, but it's always interesting. Yeah. Wait, so sell me on Sun and Steel because it sounds like this is a nonfiction book by him. I don't think I've read any nonfiction by him. Yeah, and I'm very interested by by what he has to say in a nonfiction context, especially with something that prompts you to get back to way lifting as has been your case what to sell you on i would say as far as i know this is the closest thing we have to 
um, a to his own defense of his values. Okay. By it, it's the closest thing we have to an explicit defense of Mishima's values by by him. Um, I don't know if that's actually true because I'm not like a scholar of all this stuff, but that that's how I am taking it. It's the closest thing to like a direct description of his philosophy. Got it. So. Just by the way, what we're approaching here is the um, the pointiest volcano. Guatemalan Independence Tower. This was built in the late 1900s. Um, all built of of granite block. That's why you see the the beautiful reflection against the the new light. And, uh, yeah, it represents the aspirations of Guatemala to reach the stars <laughs> someday, someday. Someday. And, and by the stars, I mean someday we'll, we'll qualify for the World Cup. That is really the largest aspiration for the Guatemala population, to uh -huh. qualify for the World Cup. Why don't they qualify for the World Cup? What does it take? Uh, we're just not good enough. Oh, is, it's yes. just like, it's like a... It's like a, a league type thing. Yeah, yeah. There's there's like a whole system to qualify for the World Cup, and uh, usually it's Costa Rica yeah. who beats us in the qualifying rounds, and we don't make it. I swear to God, the day that Guatemala qualifies for a World Cup, this entire country is going to erupt in celebration, and mm -hmm. nobody is going to work for an entire week. So yeah, it's gonna be <laughs> that's awesome. All right, we made it past the thing. I mean, these, these, uh, these monoliths are beautiful, though. I love it. It's super weird. All right, so now that we, so we've been going at this for a bit, what do you think of this format? What do you think of our? How do you think our experiment has gone? So we wanted to try this thing, talk a little bit about philosophy, fly around, talk about Guatemala. Um, yeah. What? What do you think? I can see, I hear you pouring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pour, pouring the next drink. Uh, I think it's a really good format. You like it? You know, yeah, I've, I've, I've been playing around with, uh, with the Lava Side Chat, the podcasts. Uh-huh. And those have been a lot of fun, you know. Some of them I've done uh, with video on. Right. And that face-to-face -face adds a certain element a uh, certain dynamism between how you're relating to the other person. And in some cases, uh, we've done no video because having audio only can, in a way, be even more intimate, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, but in this case, sharing the experience of flying through an amazing landscape, um, I feel like it brings us into a different space, you know? Like, yeah. I, I think about my experiences um, in road trips and the conversations I've had with close people during road trips. Right. And there's something there's something special that occurs thanks to the, the forward movement. Like, you know, we're both sitting side by side, looking at the same scenery. We're both heading in the same direction. Right. Progression. Uh, and... and yeah, and, and, and there's and there's a certain comfort in opening up to the other person that occurs more easily than if you were facing them uh, face to face without right. contact, you know. Right. Sweet. So so yeah, I think I think there's definitely something interesting here to continue exploring and, and to continue developing as as a series. As a as a as a a medium. All right. Well, given that, why don't we? Why don't I land this plane somewhere so that we can say that we say that we did so, You know, we, we made it somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where we made it to. Um, that 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 would have been that I, would be nice to to say we didn't crash and die. <laughs> I mean, we had a couple of restarts. I see one. This MMCO. I see one. Um, we can try to land at MMCO. I don't know how long how far we are from there. MMCO. I have no idea what that airport is, but it's just some random. I think it's a very random, tiny, tiny airport. We'll make it away over there. 
I'm gonna go at this MCO airport. Gormitan. Let's look at this in a map. Yeah, yeah, no idea, but it looks just across the border from Mexico. It looks like a perfect place to end the tour. Cool. I, it's a little hard for me to tell how far we are from there. Like, I can't tell if we're like five minutes or like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That, that little map gives no indication. Yeah. Wait, so so let's assume that it's at least five minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Who knows? Yeah. What is, what is one topic that you would like to riff on before we land? Let me think for a second. I guess, well, let me just ask you, how long have you been on Twitter? How long have you been actively on Twitter? Uh, six months, roughly. Only that much time, dude. You've got like as many followers as I do. I've been doing like twice as long as you. The fuck? I I went balls deep. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I went balls deep, but I guess not. <laughs> That's good. That's good though. Um, I don't know. I guess I just just normal shit. Like like what's been, I don't know what's been interesting to you about it. Like, what's been different about your experience that like maybe I wouldn't have thought of, or. Hmm. with doing all that yeah it's a good question i guess for me recently a major shift in my twitter experience has come from my trip to san francisco uh-huh so even even before i traveled there you know i had already stumbled on visa's thread about meeting mutuals in real life right and i realized wow this is a very cool thing to I'm connecting with people online and to take that connection into meet space seems like a very special thing. So before I even flew to San Francisco, I already had the intention of I'm going to use whatever free time I have. Um, I guess the primary use of my time was going to be hang out with family and hang out specifically with my sister and her brother-in-law who just had a baby. Yeah. Who's now, you know, month and a half two months old uh congratulations little legend yeah and uh yeah i just unlocked uncle mode that's fun mm -hmm. but um but uh, yeah i said besides indulging in uncle mode whatever free time i have instead of dedicating it to friends that i already have in the bay area which mm. i have several of because i went to college in the united states right i said you know what i want to on this trip specifically forget about those friendships not because they're not important like it is meeting those people and reminiscing about the past does have a an important role like it does it does have a purpose but on this on this trip specifically I'm not going to focus on those things. I'm going to focus entirely on meeting people that I don't know and right. having completely fresh conversations. And that's what I did. I met uh, I met 10 mutuals, 10 or, 10 or 11 mutuals. Yeah. And all of those conversations were very future-oriented. You know, it was very heavy on ideas, right. ideas about the future, and I walked out of each of those conversations extremely energized. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and, and, and I really appreciate it because um, I ended up feeling energized in a way that I hadn't felt since pre-pandemic times, you know? Yeah, yep. So... So yeah, that that's sort of like where where I'm at in 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 my experience of Twitter. And you know, I see it as an opportunity to connect with people right. whom you share interests with. It's it's amazing to be able to throw out a super random thought out into the void and then have other people engage with it, respond with it, right. sort of develop your thoughts on it. 
and then oh we're way too high <laughs> shit you're looking good you're looking good but yeah and then if you're keen enough you can even transform that into a, a zoom conversation with them and in real life meeting with them if you're in the same geographical location right it's uh it's a really cool mini game if you play it right right and and it's the converting it to real life right that's the cool thing <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna try again i'm gonna approach again This is real dangerous. We're gonna do this again. We're we're immortal. Come on, wheels come out. My wheels are coming out. Here we go. I I don't even know where you're landing right now. Yeah. Uh, fucking sketchy narco <laughs> airstrip in the middle of the Mexican rainforest. We're totally off by now. Yeah, you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to circle around again. We're going again. All right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no 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 no. Get it. Get up. Get up. Get up. Don't crash. All right. <laughs> That's it, man. Oh my god. No. Oh my god. <laughs> That's it. That's Rest it. Peace. All the passengers already died from heart attacks. Well, we made it. We made it. We made it to the rainforest. Look, dude, we're in the other dimension. I think we died. Look at this. This this might be exactly where we want to be. We made it to the afterlife. <laughs> you, you, you heard that uh, that yeah. voice note by Tyler Alterman about the Shaktamundi Guajara, right? Yeah, I did. Is that where we are? We I made think it. So. <laughs> We've made it to I the. Was... <laughs> yeah. So so whoever is listening and has no idea what we're talking about, Tyler Alterman, great guy posted a voice note that was uh, was sort of an impersonation of what a very spiritual person sound like on a podcast. And I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> join, join the Shaktamundi Guadalajara tradition five years ago. Every morning we'd carry milk, blah, blah, blah. By the way, look... Man, this this idea of the Shakta Mundi Guadalajara really fucking stuck in my mind like an earworm. I can't get it, out, get it out of my head. Yeah? It's haunting you? Yeah. I've, I've been thinking, like, what... All right, what would the Shakta Mundi Guadalajara center director welcome you to the center like, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> So it'd be, it, would, it would be something like, Bienvenidos, amigos, al centro Shaktamundi Guadalajara. <laughs> we are going to align your chakras. <laughs> Extremely aligned, okay? <laughs> and we will also clean your aura. <laughs> now, very important, every night... We will have group kirtan. <laughs> now, this is not any kirtan. No, 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 no. This is not the kirtan you know from India. This is Mexican kirtan. Kirtan ranchera. So practice with me. If you want to do this kirtan right, you have to be able to say the Mexican call. <laughs> Corsi, join me. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, dude. I can't do it. <laughs> and as a final note, this Madrid Center has a very strict substance-free rule, okay? No substances. No substances. But, 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 if you want to have a little tequilito, a little mezcal and sunset, that's okay. We're in Mexico, okay? We accept it. Um... So yeah, welcome to Shakta Mundi Guadalajara. Get ready to align your chakras to clean your aura, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> that was legendary, dude. All right, that's, that's Shakta Mundi Guadalajara. <laughs> Guadalajara. All right, well, with that, let's bring up our picture for the evening. 
which uh, brought to us by Clint. Just a reminder of what we're all here going for. Let's see, where, where did we even land? In front, in front of a jacked Asian guy. That's right. I feel like this was a, this is a solid ending. <laughs> 21st century. We did pretty good. All right, dude, let's end the stream. Let's end the stream. I'm going to stay on the, the call for a second, but let's call it here for our first episode. More or less successful. You know, we landed in the middle of the jungle, but... Uh, but what are you gonna do? We explore I, the cosmos. I, I, I call that a success, man. I think if we had landed perfectly on an airstrip, I would have not been happy. Yeah. So this is this is better than anything else. We've made it into the unknown. <laughs> yeah. We made it into the unknown. All right. Thanks everyone who joined us and who's still on. And uh, we'll do it again. We're gonna do it again. Thanks for Harvey Krishna for coming on. I had a lot of fun. All right.